what is up everybody okay time to do some testing of all the new units we'll do team stuff and solo stuff so on and so forth this is the lobo fight because that's generally our standard go-to for team shenanigans but uh gotta be clear though ain't nobody getting tested fairly today it's just not possible you cannot tent in any of the new characters that's a big deal a lot of times when you're really trying to you know min max in a team setting so, uh, we're not really getting a fair shake, but we'll do what we can. Uh, also, uh, this Burger Fest has, you know, bad command codes for what we're doing, so this isn't really on par with what we normally do, but we'll see how it goes anyway. Off we go. But yeah, we'll, we'll test a few units a few times, we'll do some solo stuff, we'll do some team stuff. See how it goes. I think Sith Lord will do really well against Lobo, just because... A DPS that has support elements is really good in that fight, so... They hurt Blurk. Yeah, it's a bigger deal than normal for her, because it's a cooldown reduction, for sure. But, uh, a lot of her toolkit is team-based, so actually using her in a team setting will be nice. Okay, let's see. Hmm... I think I'm going to use this right off the bat. Okay, we're in slow-mo. We'll do this. Okay. All NP game. Her third skill being team-wide is pretty good, though. Hey, Ethan, thank you for the resub for five months. I appreciate it, man. Alright, so the next turn is a Brave Chain for Burger Fest, because she has no cards here, so she has three cards left. So I want to make some stars, then. Do I NP with Hans? No, I think we wait. We'll do this. Oh, I, I already did roll a little bit. I threw summon tickets at the screen, and uh, I got her in a summon ticket, and then I used some SQ and got her again pretty quickly. So that was nice. Um, kind of lame though, because oh, fucking all the other four stars that I you know really gave a shit about. Uh, we're just like, nah, brah, and it took, you know, eight years. Oh my god, just don't, just don't even talk to me, just, just... God, it's, it's dumb. It's, it's dumb. Also, I forgot about this, I was talking about last night, we were talking about our rolling history, and I forgot we had to roll for, uh, fucking, uh, Yang CE, uh, and, uh, that went terrible, like, that went really bad. Also, because I didn't get to roll very much, I didn't get spooked by anything. I didn't really get anywhere with like the new craft essences or anything, so I didn't really accomplish a whole lot uh, outside of that, so. But you know, I'm, I'm glad to get the four star nice and easy, so. Okay, Hans is in peril right now. Okay, we want big crits. I guess we're gonna try to do a lot of damage. Fucking Lobo's got his defense buff. We need command codes, man. That would help so much right now. I mean, she'll remove- I guess she'll remove it, though. No, wait. She'll remove the evade. She's gonna remove the evade, but she's gonna do it after damage. Oh my god, that's so not value. She's literally gonna attack and get evaded and then remove the evade. That's, that's totally what she's- The only way that won't happen is if because attacking eats the evade, maybe it'll make her remove the defense buff. Uh, I think I may be on copium right now, but like maybe it'll do that because it's a one-hit evade. But I have a feeling she's going to get evaded, remove the evade buff, uh, and then she'll attack again and, and then re uh, remove the defense buff. But she does, unlike a lot of other things, she does it after damage. Um, so, like, the defense buff will still lower the damage for that attack. So she's only going to get the full damage on her final swing. So that kind of sucks. I'm not going to use the, the stars then, 
because one of my swings is going to go into the void anyway, so I'll just make it the 40% one. Do I do the buster up, though? Do we care more about... No, we'll wait for the NP, I think. Um, I really need Hans, though, to NP, but I can't really afford to use his NP right now. If I taunt on Mash, then we're vulnerable to Lobo's NP, but you could use your defensives on that turn. Huh. I guess I give... I mean, I could... Fuck. I could give Hans the... invulnerability, but that sucks. I guess I have to taunt. Why did Hans have to get so jacked up so fast? I'm putting slow-mo so we can keep track of what's going on mechanically here. Yep, she removes the evade even though it already... Oh my god. <laughs> what a waste. Oh, she barely got... Dude, she barely got any value out of her buff removal there. Uh, it basically removed the defense down, but only... For the third hit. That is all she actually accomplished there. Okay. Hmm. Yes, that's what we do. I, sh I should have done the buster up because she gives herself the other buster up on her NP. That would have been worth it. No reason to hold on to it that long. I don't know, maybe I should have let that Brave Chain go because it wasn't very good, and then Hans would have gotten the NP gain towards his next NP from uh, Berghest's, Berghest's, whatever, uh, third skill kind of whipped it. Boy, he loves that defense buff. Let's see. I guess we focus on NP gain for now. Like, in theory, her buff removal skill should be so good here, but it's not because of just the way that it works. Nightingale's food balance, Marlin, feels good. Did she just headbutt him? Okay. Technically, Burgerfest can survive because she has guts. I think we give it to Hans because I think even Mash might be able to live here. Let's give this to Burgerfest. Man, we really have not done a lot of damage. Although, if we had better command codes, I think we'd be in better shape right now. I feel like I should have used my Mystic Code earlier. Like, I kind of messed up saving it. I'm gonna give somebody guts in case I think they're gonna get insta-death, but we're just gonna pray to RNGs here. I feel like E3 hasn't been relevant in a long time. What?! Look, he only did- he did 4,000 damage and he popped insta-death. Okay, champ. Let's see if she can run that back. Dude, if- look at this. If she was 10-10-10, we could do her, uh, we could do her third skill right now. Which would be an extra damage cut, which would give her, you know, some wiggle room for coming back. Hans, I'm gonna really need you to land that defense buff right now. I just like how she didn't even take that much damage, right? She didn't take that much damage, but she got fucking insta-death. 
Let me see, what is her proc rate? I think Lobo's chance to proc it is 50%, and then their own death resistance is after that. So let's see, what was her odds here? I think Sabres are normally kind of average. Now her de <laughs> Fuck you, game! Her death rate is only 28%. So Lobo has a pretty decent chance of not procking insta-death in the first place. And if it does proc, then she only has an ins a 28% chance to die. So that was that was some bullshit right there. Okay, well, we need to. I I don't know if I want to cast this or not. I'm gonna say we don't need it. Hans is clearly gonna land the defense buff because I mean, I, I mean why wouldn't he, right? I mean of course he'll land the defense buff, right? Because he's uh, you know he's a support and you know, he looks out for the team, right? He, he's clearly. Gonna, gonna land the defense buff here. There we go. See, you, know, you just gotta, uh, you, know, you gotta have faith. Okay, I, I think she can, I think she can run this back now. Jesus, okay. Um, I'm gonna use the stars for that art crit. Am I gonna do that? No, I'm not, because our NP would have to hit the void, and I don't wanna do that. Okay, she can't heal herself until next turn. Which sucks, because that means her cooldown reduction is gonna hit nothing up for the second skill. Not ideal. I cannot believe they're removing the Sakura CE. I, I, I just, I don't under, I have no idea what they're thinking. I, I'm, I'm truly confused by that. It is such a good, it's one of, it's the only other four star CE that I think is comparable to it. Uh, that's unlimited, right? There's some limited time four star CEs that are very good. But for the, for the unlimited four star CEs, the only other one that's on par with it is Art of Death. I mean, it's so good. It's, it's the budget K-Scope. And for some units, because they have 30% batteries and stuff like that, it's just as good as K-Scope. Now, sure, it's not as good as MLB K-Scope, but, you know, that's different. Um, so yeah, I'm not, I'm not a fan of them getting rid of that. I'm hoping that they're just debating us and they're planning on bringing it back with, um, like the Mana Prism Shop or the Rare Prism Shop or something, or they're gonna put it in FP summon later. Because it's just, it's weird that that's the one they're removing. Right, like, that's just fucking stupid. Like, I I'm honestly for, I'm for them removing some of the four star craft essences because a lot of them are really bad and they're completely pointless and they just get in the way and they make it so much less likely that you're gonna get, because I think they want you to be able to get those new four star craft essences easily because those are clearly catch up uh, craft essences and, and they're really good. So I, I, yeah, I want new people to get those new four star craft essences that they're adding, but don't remove the fucking super high starting in PE1. Like, what the hell? It's weird, man. All right, mostly doing this for the heal. Man, I should have used that buster up quite a while ago. Good. I will sh say, uh, I was gonna say Shay, I don't, I don't know where I'm going with that, but I will say that uh, she does contribute to the supports, you know, she really does help them get their NPs and stuff, so that's nice. And I think we could be going a lot faster if we, one, were 10, 10, 10, and we had better command codes and stuff. Like right now she's going slow as fuck, but uh, I think we'll be able to speed that up. Um... Let's do... We'll do this, because I want to see if we can break right here. Nineteen K, that's pretty annoying. She really is going quite slow here. 
Do I give that to Hans? No. I think we give it to her, because then she'll get her MP next turn no matter what. I need absolutely need to break here then. See, if she was 10-10-10, on that turn we MP'd, we would have already had our second skill back and used it, and then reduced its cooldown. So you're like double dipping, right? Like she'd be like double dipping on the amount of cooldown reduction we'd be having if she was 10 10 10. So I, I really do think that's gonna be a big part of her performing better is just getting 10 10 10. Because I've seen that happen so many times with her where like the timings don't work out. She does not have her buff removal anymore, so this is not a particularly great time to NP, but I want the cooldown reduction. Hey look, I'll, if this was 10, I could cast it and I'd get the, the thing for the next one again. But I still think I, I think I art, NP art. I think that's the, the way here. Ans can NP next turn, so he doesn't need to use his art card. Uh, boss is NPing, so Mash has to do this. Hopefully Mash lives. I almost want to give her guts, but I think we don't. Hope she lives without it. I don't, could they get rid of the Millennium Tree? That No one uses that, right? Get rid of that garbage. I can think of a lot of four-star craft essences that they could yeet and ain't nobody gonna care about it. He might kill her even without insta-death. She doesn't have that much defense up right now. Not as much as last time. Damn, yeah, I think she's dead from damage. Dang. If I'd known that, I probably would have given her the guts, because then she could have NP'd right there. And that would be an attack up, which is good. Okay, well the boss doesn't have... defense up for once. I should have used these so long ago. They don't. They, it's been t turn 13 and it's a 10 turn cooldown. So, yeah, I messed that up. We'll give her another go later when she has like better command codes and stuff. And then I'll try to play better while we're at it. And I hate to say this, but the Kozuki CE is really bad. That, that's another really like dog shit one that like, no one's going to use that. C could they add Kozuki to the game though? Because that would be swell. We're gonna do no damage this turn. That's an unfortunate use of 100% crit. Can we just just, just add add Koizuki into the game, and then, then we're all good. He's one of my favorite masters, honestly. Han's having an interesting time with his buffs there. 96% thanks game. Okay, she can do some damage here. Leonidas with the star support feels good. Leonidas is a pretty nice budget unit uh, with her because of the buster up and star gen and protection and all that. Because she likes hard survival and taunts can help you with that. Honestly, if that crits, it might have been better to... And it does the defense down. That's, that's good. But the Medea Waifuers would get angry 
Good. Fuck them. But yeah, they do uh, cater to that mindset a lot, unfortunately. A lot of defense downs we got there. So Leonidas would not have lived that long and would not have looped if it wasn't for uh, Burgerfest's support, so that's kind of nice synergy. I mean, I find her gameplay very fun, and I see potential here, but it is a little lacking right now. Some of that is a mix of user error, and skill ranks, and command codes, and everything. But, uh, I def even if you fix all that stuff and I play better, we have the command codes, uh, no, in, n none of that nonsense, I, I don't think she's gonna be anything too mind-blowing. Although this isn't exactly the kind of stage that she would excel in anyway, but still. Uh, I don't- now that is a fucking hand. Let's see, how do I want to do this? Oh, sorry, Chen Gong, it just kind of makes sense here. We- I'll slow-mo, because we might kill here? If we had command codes and stuff, uh, probably, but I think we might be a bit short. We don't have that many buffs, really. Oh yeah, he'll definitely live. I don't think she's doing bad though. I know we actually have never used her on a sun stage. I don't know how that's happened, but we've literally never used her on a sun stage. We should use her with Gwen at some point, because Gwen makes the sun, so... And the, uh, both, like, Ooga Booga, Buster crits and all that. And Gwen also buffs the team with his attack up and stuff, so... Yeah, we- I might try that. Might do, uh, Burgest, Gwen, and Ozzy. That could be a pretty fun set. I mean, really, that, that, we'll, we'll probably do that today, actually. That, that sounds like a pretty good time. But we'll, we'll, we'll test Sith Lord and Morgan next, though. I do feel like she, am I the only one? I do feel like she's getting carried by the team a little bit. Like, over time, we have just found the, like, best possible budget support team for this fight. Like, like, we got it on lock, right? We know exactly what budget units to bring here to, to buy the DPS unit a billion turns. So you have to be a really shitty damage dealer to not be good enough. Like Phantom, you know, Phantom doesn't really get the job done so great here. Although, did, did Phantom beat this? I remember we tried that. I can't remember if Phantom actually won or not. I don't, I don't remember. I feel like he wouldn't because, uh, you know, there's a few problems there. Uh, what do we do here? Like, too many options. I want to NP, because it'll get me my second skill back next turn, but, uh... Hmm. So there's a few units like this, uh, Gwen, Canis, and now uh, Burgest, where they're AoE units, but then their their skills and their deck and everything is actually focused at single target, and it works pretty well for Gwen and Canis because they have just enough value oomph if they're set up well to get a, a, quite a bit of, of single target stuff done, right? And if it happens to be a challenge quest where you fight multiple bosses and maybe you need to pick out and kill certain ones, but then being AoE is still good because there's multiple bosses, they really, really excel. 
Uh, Burgess is in the same vein of that. She just doesn't seem quite as good. She seems close, and the team support that she has is nice, but she doesn't feel quite as good as them uh, in terms of just her ability to actually get some fucking numbers, you know, from her normal uh, normal attacks. Gotta be ready to zeep the app in case we win right here. I don't think we will because he has his defense up. Yeah, Mordred is kind of like that, but way more short-term. Mordred is very short-term with her single-target stuff because it's it's really just her second skill and just like that one bam and that, that's that. Um, I, I would say Mordred is more AoE and then single-target on the side because Mordred can double NP rather easily because of her third skill and her overcharge and you NP then you third skill with the overcharge and you NP again pretty easily. Uh, and her MP is upgraded, and she's got the big buster up for it, and she has a high attack stat. So, I, I would say Mordred is AoE first, single target second. Where, like, Canis and Gwen are honestly single target first, AoE second. Alright, I'll just close the app, because she, she can probably win this turn, and even if she doesn't, I mean, we've won. We still have George's taunt and guts and everything, so... And we have this gut still, so she's definitely won, and I don't want to risk accidentally beating the stage and losing it, so. It is nice that she, um, was able to run back that insta-death, though. That was, uh, she does have good survival, like, definitely. You know, soft survival, anyway. Yeah, her, her weakness is like, a, if the boss is like AoE NP spamming, right? She's terrible in situations like that. Um, or a boss like God Juna that has so much normal card damage that soft survival is just not, it just won't help. It, it, it's gonna fucking kill you anyway, right? So th th those are definitely some big weaknesses in her kit for certain style of things. Like, I don't think she's some high tier, like super OP four star, definitely not. But I don't think she's trash either. All right, let's see if we can find Sith Lord. I know we had a few people that had her. I think, did Beastly have her? Just so I can send him a message. Oh, Hex has her too. Okay, we'll go with that. Jesus, MP5. What the hell is this CE? I don't remember that one, which tells me it, it's probably not a meta one, but uh... Okay, well, she's gonna want a slightly different back row because she is quick. Quick is like the hardest thing to support on a budget team. It's a little frustrating. You know, some people really like Sith Lord. I mean, good for them, but she's definitely not my cup of tea. Her gameplay's all right, though. I don't mind the gameplay. Strange looking Liz, yeah. Hmm. How do I want to do this? Okay, it's def definitely something like this. We could do this just for... Oh god. I'm, I'm used to him on my main account where he's like upgraded. But on my ult, he's not ready at all. Okay, never mind that one. Let's see, she's got MP Drain. Which is actually really good here. It's really, really good here. So I don't necessarily have to have... I, I, I Basically, once George dies, I want to be in a situation where she can win. Now, if I wanted to win with her, I would just do, do another taunt. But I want to try to win faster, and because I think she can handle it. I don't think she needs to be babysat as much. So if we lose, it's not necessarily her fault. It's just me overestimating her, right? But I'm going to try to do a setup that's a bit more go, 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 because I think she can handle that with her higher damage and and slowing down the boss's NP. So I'm, I'm hoping once George is dead, it's like, we don't need another taunt and we, we can finish up before she could potentially die. Uh, yes, uh, Maniac, if you don't, uh, we'll, we'll, we're gonna use Burger Fest again in just a second. Cause uh, we, I, I just used her, but the command codes were kind of an issue and I also fucked up uh, in multiple areas. So we wanna uh, do that again, but we, we'll use Sith Lord here first. Uh, maybe I, I wonder if I do something, dude, like, yeah, I think we put George after someone else and we expect, like, Hans to die or something. Like, we don't protect the team a whole lot. So what's something that's kind of gas, gas, gas? I mean, he'd really be bringing another DPS, but I don't want to do anything 
that steals the spotlight. I really wish we had Alexander's skills leveled, because that would work really well. Hmm. There's always Fuma. David. I don't mind David. We just have so little support for Quick. That's a good question, Maniac. The Gut CE actually saved our ass, but normally we wouldn't need it. Uh, I would say starting NP, just because we kind of want to test it in a more standard setting. But honestly, the Gut CE ended up being rather good there. But uh, let's try to do it. With, it, was, it was kind of a, a safety net, right? Uh, and it, I want to see if we can do it without it, I guess. That might look weird, but he gives her the NP gain. And he shouldn't steal the spotlight too much. And just some units, they're really, they really excel when working with other DPS, so... Just Atlas. All right. Safety net and Epco. Yeah, Caesar would be all right, but um, I don't think my ult account has a particularly good Caesar. I only have a good Caesar on my main and then on NA. NA's got him 10, 10, 10. Interesting opening hand. She could NP right now, but it's not a, it's not a good time to do that. Because we I, I wouldn't want to use our drain right now. See, she has sure hit on her NP, so that'll be really nice here. Okay, that's pretty good. We'll whiff a lot of our drain, but I think it's okay. Or our battery. Oh right, we're not 10, 10, 10, so actually, we're not whiffing that much of it because we don't have the full charge. Uh, calculated. Ons should not need to use his NP yet. Alright, this is pretty good. Bonk. She didn't crit with either of those, and we had a crit buff. Oh, you hate to see it, man. We have more cards on this turn, at least. Okay. I really want to use Hans's NP, but... I gotta do it. Uh, it, it's really bad if Hans gets hit again without it. You missed the attack buff, okay. He also missed the defense buff on himself. Work with me here, Hans. Dude, Nash's NP line is so fucking long. Taking a page from Ozzy's book. All 
I, I don't think they're ever gonna add a safety net. I think Anaplex is just so against the idea. I imagine Typhoon is probably, cause like, they're, they're willing to entertain a lot of Typhoon's ideas even when they disagree with them, like with the SSR ticket. But I, I, I feel like Anaplex just has a hard no against safety nets, which is absurd, cause they have no data to support that. Because Anaplex's other games are not particularly successful. None of them have safety nets. And so it's not like they've tried it and it failed. That's not that's not happened. And all the other games have safety nets, and a lot of those games are actually doing better than them these days, right? So it it literally doesn't make any sense. But Anaplex is a, a, a not a not a smart company from uh, my experience. So well, Hans can get all of the NP gain right now, but we'll go with this. Not been great luck with the crits. Oh. Okay, well, Mash can take the NP next turn. Hans can not quite NP next turn unless I give him the third skill, which I don't exactly want to do, but we got an art chain, so I don't think I need to give it to Sith. Or do I want to go for the damage? Greed! We, we need to break this health bar anyway, so... Oh, he's got the defense buff, so this probably wasn't the best decision. Can we get a crit, please? Okay, there, that's something. He's still good in P-game. Now, if I wanted to, I could stop him from NPing, but I actually want him to NP. Which is shit, because that means I shouldn't have used Atlas, because by the time I used those skills, they would have come back anyway, so I should have used it after using them next. But there was really no way for me to predict that at the time, so... Let's see. I really would like to use her third skill though, but it's a bad time to drain. But it, it, I could probably break, because it's flat damage, so it ignores his defense up. So I might be able to actually break with it. But, um, you know what? I think I'm gonna use her. I'm wasting the vulnerability, but I don't give a fuck. Because uh, I'm hoping the quick up will actually let me Break here. No Buster card though. Come on, we have, we have crit up, we have quick up, we have guaranteed fuck. Ugh! If only we had someone's Buster card. This last second HP bar is really messing up everything. Cause yeah, like my, my skills have been back for a while, so Atlas did nothing. I, that feels terrible, dude. And look, we have double art! This sucks! Lobo is just murdering our value right now. This health bar has just been the worst thing ever. Holy shit, does this suck. There's, there's not even- she had double art crits. Dude, the amount of value that's been thrown away this run. So, uh, I've looked into this and I've talked to people in Discord and everything. Border Gurn is almost assuredly in Lost Belt 6. So basically what's going on is, so, um... Okay, in the scene where Morgan is blah 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 and like her court is talking and a lot of them are like the shadowy silhouettes and like, you know, they're not present in the room, you know, kind of thing. There's this one like hooded silhouette that's like part of Morgan's court, okay? And they don't, they don't say a whole lot and they're kind of just there. But then in that bit where Da Vinci is talking about normal Camelot history and not the Lost Belt one, and she, you know, they're showing the different characters and stuff, they show, when she talks about Vortigern, they show that exact same silhouette. Um, so really likely that that's Vortigern. The problem is uh, they've already confirmed that the 
the dragon that Vortigern drinks the blood of is still alive in the Lost Belt, so his whole plot line with that is probably not a thing. And so I think that the Lost Belt version of Vortigern is going to be drastically different from the Vortigern that like you saw in Garden of Avalon. And, I, and from, from what the silhouette looks like and everything, I don't think he's even going to be an old man. I don't think he's going to be like an older man that has dragon powers. I think he's going to be like a, you know, pretty boy with fairy powers or some stupid shit. So I'm almost positive this is going to be lame. Uh, and, and that's actually worse than if they didn't use Vortigern at all. Because they already gave Vortigern a voice actor back in Garden of Avalon, and he was awesome, and, you know, you know, cool old villain warmonger guy. You know, that's what I want, but I don't think that's what we're gonna get at all, and I, I think they're gonna make it lame. Uh, and the other thing, though, that's good, though, uh, or could be good, is that silhouette in Morgan's Court is also one of the silhouettes that they showed to be playable. So, Vortigern being playable is extremely likely. However, Vortigern getting a good design and having literally anything to do with his story isn't looking very likely. And yeah, it, it makes sense that he'd be, you know, okay with Morgan uh, because she his thing was basically trying to, you know, maintain the Age of Mystery and keep, you know, Camelot safe from the Age of Man and everything, and that's basically what's happening. Um, but yeah, I'm really worried that... Cause, and you might say, well, that's just the Lost Belt version that's going to be different. You know, they've already, you know, shown off regular Vortigern, and, you know, he's an old man and has dragon powers, so... Oh, what's the, what's the problem? Because every time they show a character off for the first time in a, a Lost Belt, and then they make them playable, you miraculously summon the Lost Belt version even, even in Chaldea, which is, you know, contrived dog shit, but they, that's what they always do. The only time that they don't do that is if the character was already, like, introduced into the game in the first place. And they show, like, the really different take for the Lost Belt version in the story, and, you know, you know like, um, I mean, hell, even with Minotaur, they kind of did that, right? But, uh, yeah, if it's the first showing of the character, and technically his first showing was in Garden of Avalon, but he's not playable from that, so, yeah, if they put him in Lost Belt, and he's really different because of the Lost Belt shenanigans, that's the one you're gonna summon, I can pretty much guarantee it. So, I I'm just hoping that somehow they still give him dragon powers and... He's, you know, an older guy and a badass, but I, I, don't, I don't think they're going to do that. But yeah, for any of you that want to see the, the canon version of Vortigern that they've already shown off, it just uh, Google or YouTube uh, Garden of Avalon Gwaine, because Gwaine's uh, short story in Garden of Avalon had Vortigern in it, and he had a voice actor and everything, and it's pretty cool, but uh, yeah, I think they're going to fuck it up in this, but we'll see him. Zergard wasn't exactly the Lost Belt version, but they still used the Lost Belt's design. And same for Ivan, although Ivan, they made like a fusion, right? And it's because it's two things. One, uh, when they introduce the character, that's the one they're kind of marketing and trying to sell to you and everything. And that's the one people get attached to or used to. So when it becomes playable later, that's the one they want. Uh, also, it's so they don't have to make two designs and do more work. That's a big part of it, right? They don't, they're not, they don't want to design two versions of the character at, at once, right? And if they have to, because one already existed, then they will. But if it doesn't, if it doesn't already have a set in stone design, they'll just conflate the Lost Belt version and the normal version. Because fuck it, because they've done that every single time, right? I don't think they're ever going to change that. Okay, we could get Nash's attack buff, but I think we're going to take the chain here, and then we'll battery. Normally I do Buster MP quick there, but they evade, so... But yeah, it's not really much of reading between the lines. It's pretty much confirmed that Vortigern is going to be playable at some point, or at least someone related to him. Because, again, the silhouette in Morgan's Court is the, this hooded figure, and that exact same silhouette is used in the flashback when they're talking about Vortigern, and that silhouetted figure has been shown to be playable later. He has an 80% defense buff, we ain't doing any fucking damage right now. I'm gonna get my MP though. You know, I probably shouldn't have made the stars there because we can't do Jack right now. I should, I should have just made stars there, I'm thinking.
Uh, no, uh, Salter's pretty much just Artoria but altered, so he's got uh, Uther's bloodline there. Aggravain might be in it, we'll see. People have said that they're hinting at him, like, hanging out with Percival, so maybe he'll finally get rated up. I would be down for that. Well, she, she's going a lot faster, and she could be going way faster if all that... We didn't have such wonkery when we were trying to, uh... Break that health bar. I think we could have about won by now if that had gone smoother. If I could roll for Agravain and Bordergurn, that would be awesome. So, okay. Chat, I think I'm about- to, this is about to be copium as fuck. But I, a man's got a dream. Okay? So, some of this isn't copium. Some of this I think is actually pretty reasonable. But like, so, uh, Morgan, the one you summon in Chaldea, surprise, surprise is uh is the lost belt one and if you read her profile she's significantly nicer and, and more reasonable than the regular morgan they even compare her to regular morgan and regular morgan is is definitely much more of a villain right so i think they want you to think of the uh onset of lost belt six that morgan is going to be the big bad and the big problem in this lost belt and she'll probably be a road bump at some point and, and, you know, make issues. But I really don't think she's the big bad. I'm not sure she's even going to be bad at all. Uh, you know, she might end up being, you know, good in the long run. Or at least kind of like how Scatty was in Lost Belt uh, 2. I think she might end up playing a pretty similar role to that kind of thing. Um, and the, so that would mean the big bad needs to be some, someone or someone's, you know, else. Uh, other things are going to be the, the big bad. And I, I really think that's going to be the case. And what if that's, what if that's Vortigern, right? You got Vortigern in the wings, kind of just seems like the sad bad guy to Morgan. But, uh, you know, what if he ends up, like, because something's got to be the other five star, right? And what if the other five, because it showed that Vortigern's probably going to be playable. What if uh, you're hot, too high on Kofi? I mean, yeah, I, I, I know. But, but what if he gets to be a five star? He's the big bad, you know, he's the part two uh, banner for the next part, and, and, you know, he, uh, it's like, you know, move over, I can do it better, and, and, you know, dragons up, and, uh, here, here's the big thing that makes me think that's not gonna happen. I actually think what I just said would be really plausible if it wasn't for fucking Tam Vinch, because they, they can't, they are so high on her, and they just, you know, they've had her be a thing for so long, they're not gonna throw a monkey wrench in her plans. She is going to to become some big nasty beastie thing. You know, whatever she's got her sights on to become that, she's gonna get, and she's there for the dragon. That's why she decided to go to Lost Belt 6. They're not gonna have Vortigern take the dragon from her, and if he does, they'll, sh they'll have her kill him and get the dragon powers or whatever, right? There's just no world where Vinch gets one up by Vortigern here. There's just no fucking way, right? It, it, she's too popular and they've, you know, kind of, you know, alluded to her uh, shtick too much that I, I just I don't I don't see it happening. I hope I'm wrong, but if Vinch wasn't there, I would say it's actually totally possible that Vortigern would be the big bad, uh, especially because they showed the silhouette and, and all that stuff, and then you know Dimension talking about Vortigern and all that. Um, you know, if they hadn't done that, I wouldn't even entertain the idea. But uh, yeah, the Vinch I think kind of ruins everything. So, but we'll see. Okay, 98% Hans. I really wanted him to get his NP and then use this next turn and, and, you know, do it again, but that's not happening, unfortunately. I gotta say, her performance here is quite good, and this is with some pretty wonky luck. I mean, I, I tell you, we whiffed an insane amount of value on that break bar, and because I used Atlas too soon, and it literally went into the void. So, um... Honestly, she's performing quite well, and she's not even 10-10-10. So, and I will say, though, this is a very good fight for her because of her NP having sure hit. But, I mean, sure hit's good, and, and re, you know, it, it often will reward you like that, so. <laughs> land the attack up. This is totally wasted if we don't land the attack up. 
I'm pretty sure that, um, first off, there's more than one 666, uh, or B6, uh, there's only one 666, but, uh, there's more than one B6, because, uh, the other 666 is specifically the prototype's beast, and, uh, now when it gets brought here, it might take up the role of it, because it kind of seems like beasts work like grands, and more than one thing can, can inherit the mantle of beast 1, beast 2, beast 3. Like, they very much implied that, just like how different things can have the mantle of grand for each class. Uh, and so if 666 is brought here, that might just, like, activate as the role of B6, and whatever other thing could be B6 just won't, you know, be around at the same time. But who knows? But I have a... I think there is a chance that B6 will be in Lost Belt uh, 6. Uh, they, uh, there's been a few things hinting at that, but I kind of feel like what they would do is an event, uh, a, a limited time event that's more serious, because they do that every once in a while, they have a limited time event you know, event story, but it's a more serious one, like CCC and stuff like that. And they do a 6.5, because 4.5 was an event story, and the maze event was um, was 3.5, right? And, and that, uh, you know, was a more serious story. So I think they might do like a 6.5 um, that has some like loose con aftermath connections with, uh, with Lost Belt 6, and then they do... Um, they do B6 there as the big bad, and then Arthur is there. Because I could see them being really willing to use Arthur in, like, quote, air quotes in the main story, but not in the main story. You know, it's actually an event story that, you know, you're, you're, it's limited time, and, and if they ever did an anime, they wouldn't do, and, you know, that... I could totally see them doing Arthur like that. Um, so I could... That, that, I don't know. I, it's hard to say, though. We, have, we don't know enough about Lost Belt 6 yet, to be sure. Yeah, they, they could use one of the other beasts. I mean, who knows? And they might not even use a beast, so we'll, we'll see. But yeah, I, I've, I've, I really do lean towards B6 being in like a 6.5 style event. It just, it makes a lot of sense. And it gives them a chance to, to touch up some of the prototype stuff. And they seem to have been intentionally avoiding that for a while, so I could definitely see it happening. Okay, boss doesn't have defense up. This is a good turn to do the shenanigans. I'll tell you what, though, she's performing really well because not only do we get bad luck and I misplayed, uh, I literally wasted my Mystic Code, so I would have been better off bringing just the default Mystic Code. She's, the extra evade and stuff has been nice for the team and everything, so stabilizing just fine, uh, getting really good value and looping just fine, slowing Lobo down like a motherfucker, I mean, like, like she's doing really well, I gotta say. Doing the quick just because I want to crit. Because all the stuff with B6 has always been side content. That's why I think... It'd be weird that they keep t using B6 and side content and like event stuff and, and limited stuff and like Arthur's trial quest and all that. And then when it finally shows up for realsies, it, it's in the main story, right? I just don't see them doing that. Because, you know, B6 stuff has been in a limited time event and it's been in Arthur's interlude. Uh, so I, I feel like they would do it in an event instead of the main story. But, I mean, I'd be fine if they did it in the main story, because Arthur's cool and, and 666 is the original beast, for God's sakes. Like, they made the beast class for prototypes 666. I kind of want to just let MASH die, because we just don't need her anymore, and I might as well, like, go gas, gas, gas mode. I'm literally using this for the battery, and I'm, I'm just going to let MASH die here. I, I, we just don't need it. I think we actually win next turn. And she did excellent. Again, not 10, 10, 10. Didn't play well. I basically had no Mystic Code. Actually, no, we had no Mystic Code. We've never done debuff removal. The Atlas whiffed because we we held our skills for two turns, so they did nothing. Uh, and we, we have yet to use the invulnerability for a Mystic Code. So we literally did this with no Mystic Code. So, uh, honestly, very good performance here. Yep, she wins. She'll easily do 40k. And her dots are doing a lot, too. Yeah, oh Jesus, she'll do so much damage. Because Hans can give her potentially the attack buff. Bedivere gives her the NP up. Yeah, very good performance here. Like, excellent. So it's not really clear what happens in the city in Prototype because they've only we only know so much about Prototype because we have the OVA, we have some interviews with Nasu, and we have the rather detailed character material book, but it doesn't talk about stuff like that. And if you look throughout their fight in the OVA, the town seems, or the city seems completely abandoned, right? So everyone's probably freaked out and left, or been killed from something else, or they're in like another dimension, because like the lighting is weird. So I, I, I suspect 
that there aren't people there. Otherwise, I don't think Arthur would have been like, yep, I'm off, just, you know, Excalibur, you know, super high EX rank, engulfs the entire city. I don't think he would have done that. Um, so I, I suspect something is going on there that we're just not privy to. Like a reality marble, the civilians have been teleported out, or they're all trapped in another dimension, or, they're, or the servants are in another dimension, or whatever, right? Something is weird is going on. Uh, because you literally don't see a single soul, and they're like in a subway running through the buildings, right? And there's just no one, and, and like the city just looks weird. It, lo it looks like, you know, haunted almost, right? So I suspect there just aren't any civilians around for whatever reason. And Proto Guild honestly doesn't really seem like the type to be want to just murder everyone like that, so... Uh, also, no, Proto Guild doesn't really look... I mean, he's similar to Gil in that they both have blonde hair. And kind of spiky, but his hairstyle is quite different. His, ha his face shape is different. I think they're they're quite recognizable from each other. It's true. The subway I think is going, but I don't think there's even people in the subway car. So you know, it's it's weird. Also, I don't. They may not even thought about that. That was just like a dramatic thing for them changing forms. But uh, it's hard to say. You know, who knows. Uh, I, and maybe Nasu doesn't know. Maybe he hasn't even he has, that part of it. He hasn't really flushed out. And then when we get to that, they'll have a a think about like, yeah, what about all the people? <laughs> so you got Gilgamesh like engulfing everything, and then uh, Arthur, uh, you know, blowing everything to Kingdom Come. So. Uh, no, Proto Gil's not like Team Gil at all. Quite the opposite. Like. Proto Gil is significantly more reasonable and, and less shitty than, than Fate Stay Night Gil. It's not even close. Like they're they're quite different, honestly, like that. Like he's way less of a shitbag. They really they make note of that in the character material book. Like he's still prideful and uh, and, and that kind of thing, but he is significantly less of a shit than uh, than regular Gilgamesh. Let's see. Like he, he makes Fate Stay Night Gil look like Teen Gil, very much so. However, we do have less characterization for him, so they could always change that. Uh, Alright, I guess Morgan is up next. This will be an odd one. Oh, Maniac with, with the triple. Uh, it, Maniac, if you're here, could we get some like really basic stuff for, uh, for Morgan? It doesn't have to be anything amazing, but if not, don't worry about it. Because she is a five star, so... It's kind of okay if uh, we don't go too crazy, but uh, oh yeah, you got all three of them, and you actually got them all leveled up and everything. You must uh, had a lot of mats to spare there. We'll do uh, okay. We can do Burger Fest first. I was gonna do her last because we already did her once, but yeah, I guess we don't have to mess around. Can we get the Gil uh, the A A O one? Can we get the uh, A O one and on, on, on whatever card? Uh, probably on a Buster card, I would think. Um, but the you know, AO1 is just so good here. And because she's so normal card damage based, I don't want her to get cock blocked all the time by the defense up. I, I know she removes buffs already, but it doesn't work. Uh, we, we already we, we, we've gone over this because uh, it removes the buff after damage. So uh, it, it's not particularly helpful. Yeah, honestly, you would think her buff removal skill would be amazing in this fight. It is absolutely not, because the, like, the evade, she fucking gets evaded, and then she removes the evade that has already expired. It's really dumb. Because what would be awesome is if, like, she attacked, removed the evade through attacking, and then removed the defense buff, and then the next card gets full damage, but she doesn't do that. She fucking removes the evade buff that's already been removed. I don't, I don't know how that works, but uh, it is what it is. I mean, really, Babylonia Gill is basically the same as Fate Zero Gill. The reason why Fate Stay Night Gill is so different is because of the Grail Mud, for the most part. And, and the thing is, this is just a fact when you look at the characterization of, of Gilgamesh and what, how Natsu said. If you summoned you, Castor Gil into Fate Stay Night, he would be pretty much exactly the same 
as Archer Gilgamesh because they're, they're they're the same fucking person and they're both post in Kiru death and everything. The, the difference in their attitude is because of the state of humanity. Castrogil is in Babylonia where humanity is awesome and is everyone has purpose and meaning and they're you know trying and they're not a joke. And then uh, Archergill is in a state of humanity where it's consumer culture. Most people are sheep and don't have any purpose and they're not important and are needed to society and, and like, you know, he, he hates it. Uh, there, if you look, uh, C.C. Silly Gilgamesh acts basically exactly the same as Castor Gilgamesh. Like, they're, they're, they're the same fucking character. They're, there's literally no, no difference. And that's because Gilgamesh and CCC doesn't, you know, loathe the state of humanity. And, and this is not reading between the lines. Nasu has said this exact thing. That's why CCC Gilgamesh is a lot, you know, more reasonable and nicer than Face Day Night Gilgamesh. So Fate Zero Gilgamesh is basically, you know, CCC Gilgamesh or, you know, Castor Gilgamesh in an era that he doesn't like, but then not corrupted by the Grail. So that's basically Fate Zero Gil. So if you put CCC Gil or, or uh, Babylonia Gil into Fate Zero, he's going to be exactly the same. Uh, and then if they're corrupted by the Grail, they're going to be exactly the same. And if you put Archer Gil in Babylonia, where humanity is very competent, people do have purpose and, and all that stuff, he's going to be the same thing as, as Castor Gil. They're, they're literally the same person. It's, it's, you know, there's a mild difference because they're slightly different in age and stuff, uh, but they have the same memories, they have the same experiences. And they're both affected by the state of humanity. And that's why when you summon Archer Gill, he's in... you Because Archer Gill is in Babylonia, right? Because Castor Gill dies and summons himself because Gilgamesh. Um, and he literally does that, by the way. It's fucking ridiculous. But yeah, Gill dies and summons himself. And you summon Archer Gill. And they don't say this, but presumably Archer Gill uses... Because they detailed this Noble Phantasm. He has a Noble Phantasm where Gilgamesh can obtain the memories of uh, any other Gilgamesh. I sh should be able to just start the stage and the command codes should update on their own. Um, anyway, uh, Gilgamesh can obtain the memories of other versions of himself and other timelines uh, at any time that he wants. Uh, if he just straight up say that he can do that. Uh, so presumably when he, when he summons Archer Gil into Babylonia, he probably just used that uh, Noble Phantasm immediately. I mean, if, if I got summoned by myself and I saw my dead corpse right there, I'd probably do the same thing. Uh, so yeah, he just got all the memories of, of Castor Gill there, and, and that's why he kind of just picks up where Castor Gill left off, and it's not, you know, nothing really changes. But it's still Archer Gill. It's literally Heroic Spirit Archer Gill at the end of the story there. And Fate Strange Fake Gill is more reasonable because of Enkidu. They straight up say that. And because when he's summoned, he's basically exactly like Fate Zero Gill, right? And Fate Zero Gill is kind of in between Fate Stay Night Gill Right, and, and in, in like CCC and, and Babylonia Gill, right? So most people see Babylonia Gill and CCC Gill as like the most positive, and Fate Stay Night is the most negative. Fate Zero Gill is really in the middle. And Fate Strange Fate Gill is, is exactly the same as Fate Zero Gill, and he's bored and everything else. It's pretty much the exact same thing. Um, and, and what makes him a bit more like CCC Gill and, and Babylonia Gill, maybe not quite as nice as them, but puts him more in that realm is Enkidu being there, and then also he ends up uh, with time liking his master uh, and stuff, so then he's more reasonable. But uh, yeah, he was like so bored and, and pissed uh, when he gets summoned in Face Strange Fake. He was just, he was literally going to ignore the the war entirely. He wasn't going to do anything with any of it because uh, you know he can maintain his form in the world on his own because Gate of Babylon is, is fair and balanced. Um, but anyway, he, he was just going to drink his potion of youth and fuck off. That was literally what he was going to do. But then he was like, oh, and Kidu's here. I guess I can actually, uh, yeah, now, now it's worth my time. Because that's, that's how he saw He was like, this, is, this shit isn't worth my time. I'm going to go, you know, play with the kids or whatever. And, uh, but he's like, oh, wait, and Kidu's here. Never mind. Okay. What's the, uh, what's the plan here? All right, definitely. No, wait. Okay, hold on. So she makes 15%, wait, she doesn't make 15% because she's not 10, 10, 10. I am so annoyed that we cannot test them at 10, 10, 10. It, it, especially for her, I think it affects her the most. It's, it fucking sucks. Um. So she'll get herself right now to uh, 63 and a half. And then uh, Merlin would make that 73 and a half. And then the art itself would surely get her to, to uh, 85-ish. So then if we use Hans's thing, she should be able to have her NP next turn. Okay, so I feel confident 
in, in doing those two then. The question is, do I need to do the art chain? It's super overkill for her, but it helps Hans out. And it's not like I could really do any damage this turn anyway. I really dislike that we got this on this turn because uh, I have a feeling he's going to cast the defense buff and we would need it next turn. Uh, I guess we just art chain then. It's definitely overkill, but uh, carrying King Hans get the, getting the thing is kind of nice. Her CE has ignore evasion, by the way. Oh, that, uh, I, I probably would have done her Buster Cord then. Uh, good to know, though. That, that'll definitely help her out here quite a bit. Okay, well, if that's the case, this is actually going to be a really good turn for us then. I'm really glad Maniac told me that, because, uh, I would not be doing what I'm doing right now otherwise. Please get these stars. Yeah, there we go. Okay. <laughs> Big numbers. I mean, they've said multiple times that Gil's class is just so irrelevant and it's rather accurate. And hey, Herd Blur, thank you for the resub for eight months. I'm hoping, I'm hoping Lost Belt 6 is going to be good in the second half. You know, I really did not care for the first chunk of it. But, uh, I'm, I'm rooting for it to get better. So yeah, watch this, Maniac. If, if we get two cards... Uh, she only got one. But yeah, she'll just remove the evade. She fucking removes the evade, uh, even though it would remove itself. And it's not like she removes the evade and does damage. Hey, Beastly. She removes the evade after damage and after it would expire on its own. It is so bad. It's rather frustrating. Although I guess we have sure hit, so it won't actually do that here. Uh, what's the play then? I guess I do this. Man, giving her sure hit is going to help her so much right now. Look what I got. Uh, I, I guess you got more Burger Fest. I think she was MP2 before. MP5 Morgan, though. Jesus. I did not get any Morgan, and I'm. I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm like super happy about that, but I didn't I didn't really want her at all and I, I you know I don't mind Morgan. I'm glad she was added. She deserved to be added. You know, at least her design is normal and everything. But I, I don't think I would ever use Morgan really, so I didn't really care if I got her or not. Oh, that's your main. Okay. Well, Hans is not looking so healthy right now. Uh, deck him in the schnoz. Also, I, I would like Morgan more if it was regular Morgan. I don't really- I really don't like what they're doing with her personality in Lost Belt. Uh, or not even so much in Lost Belt, the fact that you summon the Lost Belt version. Right? Because presumably her design, or what she looks like, will, will not change between Lost Belt and regular history. I mean, why would it? Because uh, we already saw her in, like, APOC, and it's pretty much the exact same thing. Um, but she's way nicer. Like, and they even say that the Lost Belt version is way nicer than the regular one. Um, and, like, I don't really want Morgan to be nice. Right? If I, if I was going to use Morgan in F-Go, I want the villain. Right? That's what she's famous for, right? That- that- she's the bitch! Right? Why- why do I want to use Softy Morgan, right? That- that's- that's no good, uh... You know, it's like Mori- who wants- who wants, like, a, a version of Moriarty that's not plotting and scheming? I mean, that's- that's not great. Uh, Mordred's not even in the Lost Belt. Uh, she was never created because she never wanted to take down Artoria because Artoria was never king. So that- that- never did that. Her regular kids- uh, still exist, but that that whole thing never happened. So, I mean, maybe there's some secret thing, and she actually does exist, and there's some other bullshit going on. But as of right now, she just does not exist, and 
Uh, I don't really expect her to because, I mean, they've used Mordred frivolously, but they've used Mordred so many times that, you know, even though it makes so much sense to use her now, they're not going to. And a lot of people are happy about that, and I'm like, fuck off, but, uh... Okay, what are we gonna do here? I guess we see red press red again, although I like how we have both buster cards and we don't have the one to remove the defense buff. So, uh, that kind of sucks. Now, what chat- oh my god, chat. What if- what if we get a, a Lost Belt 6.5 event? And it's very prototype based. And we get the big bad is more copium. Uh, the big bad is Beast 6. You know, Beast 666. And Proto Mordred gets to be there. And, and Proto Ku gets an animation update and a buff. And they add Proto Gilgamesh. And Arthur's the main character. And it's an event story that. <laughs> uh, like the copium, yep. It's like, yep, now he's gone. Uh, but that would be awesome! Like, that would be some good shit! Lol, no. I mean, it could happen! Alright, what are we doing here? I guess we try to save M.A.S.H. So we can get our NP without Hans' third skill, and Hans can get his NP next turn, but I want the crit stars, because critting next turn would be swell. I hate this! I hate this. I Every time I use her, it happens. We're going to NP next turn, and two of our skills are going to be on a one-turn cooldown, so they would have come back next turn anyway, but I'm going to reduce their cooldown so it whiffs. And if I was 10-10-10, this wouldn't happen. I said this last time. She is getting destroyed by being 888. This happens every fucking time. I don't think we've used her one time without this happening. Like, it's stupid. If she was 10-10-10... I would- I could use my- oh my god, that's so dumb. Oh my god, so she's almost never getting- She is so close to getting value out of her NP, but she keeps getting no value out of it at all. It just keeps happening, and it's only because she's 888. I don't think we're gonna get Proto Merlin for a while, because I suspect that they have a limited time exclusive deal with Sega for Arcade, because uh, Anaplex and DW don't have anything to do with FGO Arcade. So, uh, and Sega wants that money. So I suspect that there's been some kind of under the table deal where it's like a limited time exclusive. So, uh, I don't know, how long has Proto Merlin existed in Arcade? Because I suspect it's at least six months to a year for, uh, like if it's a ex uh, limited exclusive. Uh, but I haven't really kept track of how long it's been. But, uh, I, I definitely think Sega ain't letting that just, you know, fly off the table in no time. It's been about six months. So, well, okay, what if they, do, uh, maybe they do 6.5 in, you know, four or five months or whatever. Uh, maybe, maybe they would do uh, Proto Merlin then, maybe it'd be enough time then, I don't know, we'll see. It took them forever to do, uh... 4.5. I mean, they did 4.5 after Lost Belt 5, right? So, you know, they could do 6.5 after Lost Belt 7, for fuck's sakes. So, God knows when it's gonna happen. Alright, I'm not really sure what to do here. This is- I, I'm so mad about the cooldowns, dude. I'm so mad. It's, it's so frustrating. So she can get her NP without it, Hans can get it without it, but I do want the stars, that's the thing. I could give it to her and not do the art chain. And then I can do the quick card. What if I could break this turn? Is there any way I could break this turn? If she crit, maybe. We have no attack buff, we have no crit buff. 35k, we have the defense down. I don't see us breaking this turn. Oh god. I'm gonna hold on to her NP then, so I'm gonna not- I'm not gonna use Hans' third skill. And we're gonna hold on to her NP so it actually gets value on the cooldown reduction. Like, fuck this nonsense. Watch her double crit here. You know, casually get the 20%. Okay, no. Okay, I don't- I don't think she would- yeah, okay, this didn't land either crit. Alright, well, we made the right call there.
I mean, I think there'll be way more going on in Lost Belt 7 than just the Ort stuff, but I, mean, I think the Ort stuff is going to be a, a huge part of it, at least at the end. But who knows, the Ort stuff might even transcend Lost Belt 7 and, and go on to a later point. So, I don't know, we'll see. Okay. Let's see. We need to break, and I would certainly be happy if we used Hans's NP. She has such a good hand right now, it's a shame that the break bar is so low. Okay, we might actually have a good turn here. So Maniac, when we did this the first time, she got NP'd because we had we had a billion defense ups and damage cuts that the NP wouldn't do much damage to anybody, and it only hit her for 4k and she had full health, and it procked insta death and she went down to one health. Uh, thankfully though, because of damage cuts, she survived being attacked and she actually got her. Uh... Why is it? Why is the? What is? Why is the health bar? Why is the health bar not broken? What, um, what's going on here? We are, we are whiffing so much value right now. What, I was, I wasn't looking at the screen. What, what the fuck happened? I, I, I want my money back. What the fuck? Great. Well, now we're waiting another turn because, you know, that's what we wanted. <sighs> Watch Hans die here and, like, run everything. I don't understand. How did we not kill? What, like, what happened? Low attack stats come through? That shouldn't have... That should not have... Did we, like, not crit with anything? Like, what? It, what is going on here? I should have used the first skill or something. Can you stop hitting Hans, please? Okay. We... This is stupid. We just, do you, do you, chat, do you realize how many turns just went by? Like, all those turns could have been getting the cooldowns back on our skills. Like, that is so shit. Like, what the fuck was that? The only good thing is at least we're not whiffing any of the value of our skills here, but uh, we whiffed so many turns that we might as well be. <laughs> Oh, the pain. She really wants Buster cards on that turn because of the, the Buster up she gives herself, but only it only lasts one turn from the MP. I think at least one of the cryptors will survive all the lost belts, but I mean, se several of them are already dead, so the whole crew ain't gonna make it. I don't think Barrel's gonna make it, let's be real here. This might look weird, but I I've gotta make sure Mash gets her NP. I guess we do this. And then he just attacks a mash a million times, and she would have gotten her NP anyway. She is doing better than last time, though. They're not gonna try to redeem Barrel. There's no way. I think they might redeem him in, in like, explaining why he is the way that he is. Right, and they should do that. Right, he shouldn't just be a, a, a murder psychopath just cuz. Right, and it, you know it probably will be a sympathetic backstory to an extent, but I, I don't think they're gonna. I don't think he's getting a redemption arc. I don't, I don't think so. Like, I don't think people that even like Barrel want that. I think that would. I, would, I don't. Like, that would take away from his character a lot. They really should not do that. So I, I really don't think they will. I don't think. I don't know about Zoltric being playable, but it wouldn't shock me if Zoltric shows up at some point throughout. Uh, Somewhere in 2.0, because I mean, let's be real, Lost Belt 7 is not going to be the finale. Hmm. Yeah. 
She can definitely face tank the damage from the NP, but because I'm so scared of insta death, I'm going to do that. Maybe I should just taunt it on Mash and let her go. We should get our NP here, no problem. I mean, David is definitely gonna something, right? I it's 17k though. I like how she lifted though from 17k. Um, yeah, there's definitely gonna be more up with him, but it, we just know so little about him. It's really hard to and have any idea. Give him the bonk. Wouldn't shock me if Beryl dies to alien god forces because he's against them. I guess I just cast it now. We got some decent value out of our cooldown reduction for once. I mean, her gameplay really is fun. This is a neat, uh, like, gameplay cycle that she goes through. But her, the value is a little off, right? It's kind of noticeable that her value is a little off. I think they overvalued the team support that she has. Which, is, her team support is nice, it really is. Uh, she does help the team stabilize, she helps their teammates get their NPs and stuff. But, um, I think the one way her numbers are, are kind of reasonable is if there is sunlight. I have never used her on a sunlight stage, but I kind of suspect that that will line up pretty well. Uh, to like compensate for her attack stat and just everything else. Uh, but we'll have to see. Boss has double defense up, so we ain't doing shit this turn. I mean, Mash isn't dead, Da Vinci isn't dead, although Da Vinci is definitely going to die, because... Uh, well, actually, Da Vinci is dead. It's more like there's a homunculus with D Da Vinci's memories, but that's gonna die too. Um, so Da Vinci's double dead. Uh, I think Sherlock's gonna die at some point. Probably gonna become a, a villain to a certain extent. At least be antagonistic to us, I would say. We might kill here, so I'll uh, slow mo just in case. Depends if we crit. If we crit a lot, we'll kill here. If we don't crit a lot, we, we won't. But we got a lot of buster up and defense down. Oh yeah, no, he's dead. Well, that one didn't crit, but yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure even if this doesn't crit, he's dead. Oh yeah, well, because if that didn't crit, we still had the extra, so. Okay, that's the other ref go right there. We'll jump on that one in a minute. Okay, now we'll use Morgan. Well, she did way better that time. That was a billion times better than the first attempt. Yeah, Gordy needs to live. But I don't think he will. I actually think he has death flags everywhere, but uh, we shall see him. Kind of funny seeing Morgan with the Merlin command code. Okay, she is Buster, so... 
Oh man, our team was wrong. We forgot to switch the team back to something that was more appropriate in the back row. But we never needed our back row, so it ended up not mattering. Yeah, I would say that was a pretty good performance there. Obviously the Craft Essence had a huge impact, but uh, that fight is also a real counter to her. And it's not like Sure Hit... Uh, sure Hit CEs aren't rare anyway, so... You know, if you want to set her up that way, it's not really a problem. How... Okay, I, got, I gotta think about this. This is literally the first time I've ever used Morgan in a team setting. I'm thinking between Anniversary Blonde and Atlas, because their skills are good, so lowering their cooldowns is excellent. However, they're not, obviously they're not at rank 10, so it's not as good. And she has a lot of synergy with Anniversary. And there's no debuffs here, so we'll do Anniversary. Besides, I feel like that's the funner way to go, even if it's not meta. Okay. Well, I mean, they already said 2.0 is, you know, going to probably wrap up the story uh, for that, you know. Well, actually, what they said was the originally intended for 2.0 to completely wrap up the story. But then they said, like Nasu said himself, that he's making two plot outlines for 3.0. One for if it's a brand new story and, and 2.0 is done and, you know, it's, uh, that's it. Uh, and another plot outline if they want 3.0 to continue on and be connected to 2.0. Uh, but so if Chalda disbands, though, at the end of 2.0, that's not really surprising. I can't believe we don't have an option to farm the new mats right now. I, I, that, I, it's, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. Okay, I don't, I have no idea how to play Morgan. Um, so right, she's got the battery. She can NP right now if she wants to. We don't have sure hit or anything like that, I don't think. I've actually forgot to look what our craft essence was. Okay, no, we do have sure hit. Uh, maybe we do click the buttons then. Fuck it, I'm doing it. Wait! Shit! She's not 10, 10, 10! Oh my god, this game is stupid! Whoa. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna mildly cheat just so we can. This one, this isn't even as helpful as actually being 10, 10, 10 because the cooldowns are still longer and everything else. But we're kind of mimicking it there, and we won't get 200%. So it's not really cheating there. It's just kind of a a way to halfway get what we're supposed to get. Uh, I don't feel bad about that at all. Uh, yeah, we'll do this. Why did she turn into Edmund for a second there? Getting all edgy. Okay, this should be a good opening turn. Is Lobo man? Because, uh... That's kind of a, a hard one, because man is for things that actually existed. Now he's Earth, I guess that, that makes sense. But you got the German mercenary, right? So that's kind of a weird one. Uh, you know what's funny? Um, Artoria is Earth, because, you know, King Arthur is a legend and, and not real. But Saber Altar is man. And at first, you might be like, that doesn't make any sense. The reason they did that, this is kind of a good reference, but it's also kind of stupid. It, it's like so stupid, it's, it's kind of painful, but it also kind of works. It's because Saber Altar exists because she got reincarnated by the Grail. So it's like she's real. Right, because they get like fleshy bodies and stuff, but like that's kind of stupid. But but they did that. They literally gave Saber Alter the man trait because she's quote unquote real, uh, and Artoria is Earth. So it, it's kind of dumb because man generally stands for things that were in real life were real, right? But yeah, it is what it is. 
Well, I, I just can't. I, why does it start out so zoomed in on her mouth? I, it's just so bizarre to me. Like, why that zoomed in, right? Maybe take a, 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 a you know, a step or two back to start that with. I gotta say, uh, now, testing Berserkers here is kind of bullshit, because the whole reason we taste, t taste? The, the reason we test everyone else here is because they're not counterclassing, and it makes the fight harder, so it gives them more room to shine, right? That is not applicable to Berserkers, obviously, but that's kind of the thing with Berserkers, is they're pretty much always in that boat, so, you know, what are you gonna do? Okay, well, the defense up is going to get us here if we like it or not. Give him the big bonk, though. I feel like I love Arjuna is a bad influence in my chat. She's going pretty fast there, though. And she's AoE, for God's sakes. Please double crit and please break this health bar. I know he's got the giant defense up, but if you could somehow punch through. Oh, there we go. Big crits. Love it. Okay, that's a big help because now I can just NP freely and not worry about it. Well, so far so good. Although I can't really remember. We've used a couple of other berserkers here and uh, I can't quite remember how they performed. Boy, Hans is having a bad time right now. This might look crazy, but I'm doing it. I'd like to use her art card, but... Hans in P game. Oh yeah, we're definitely never getting regular Morgan. At most, they might use her in an event down the line, and they just use the sprite of Lost Belt Morgan to represent her, but she's never going to be playable. At least not in this game. Maybe in some future game, you know, way down the line, but uh, yeah, it, it ain't happening. You, I wish he it, it. I wish he had attacked Hans. Fucking Morgan just got obliterated there. That would be the weakness to uh, Berserkers, though. Yeah, the battle here is going to be keeping her alive. She's got the damage. Not on this turn, she doesn't. I'm going to give this to Hans because I need to get his MP again. Mesh might live. Why did I not use this buster up earlier? Don't really get the logic on that one. Okay, Hans's first skill is about to come back, so I need to make sure he gets a good chunk of NP here. It's not like we're gonna do any damage here. Wait a minute, I gave him the... I gave him the third skill though, I actually didn't really need to do that then. Eh, maybe I did. Mash, how tanky is ye? Pretty tanky. At that tipping point, <laughs> yeah. But... Okay, yep. Uh, no, yeah, she good. Yeah, she all right there. No, no problem.
How much are, are we gonna get here? She's eight, so she'll give herself 22%. That's not enough. Fuck. Might as well cast it though to put it on cooldown, I think. Nice that it's flexible though and she can target it. She has no cards right now. Spectacular, even though the boss has no defense buff. Yeah, beasts have to love humanity in some way, and he is not that, so... I mean, Vinch isn't actually a beast, so that... it doesn't matter. Now, she may find a way to become one, but, uh, cause it, again, it's very much implied that they're like Grands, where it's like there's one beast for each thing. It's just one at a time. So, uh, you know, a bunch of different things can meet certain criteria. So she's gonna try to meet the criteria for I think she'd be happy to meet the criteria of any of the seven beasts. But there's probably only one that she's gonna, you know, potentially fit into. And she already tried earlier and it didn't work, but I mean, she's not done, so... 98%, at least we got our first skill. We can remove his defense buff, thank goodness. Yeah, Vinch doesn't even care, to be honest. Like, she, she's happy to be a beast. Uh, a, a fucking Twitter troll, like, it doesn't matter. It, it, she wants to be as powerful as Amaterasu without being Amaterasu, right? So she just wants to get more powerful by any means necessary, and Beast Hood is just, like, the, the thing she's like, oh yeah, that, that, that'll, that'll work, right? But she'll take whatever she can get. Well, I would say Morgan's doing quite well, considering she's an AoE unit in a single target scenario, and she's kind of wrecking shit, and she has enough survivability. Because with just Hans and Mash, she's able, she's staying pretty stable on the survivability front, and we didn't even bring a Mystico to help with that. So I gotta say, this is pretty, uh, this is pretty good. Uh, we're probably not gonna get a lot done here, though, because of the double defense buff, but I think we win next turn. Oh my god, she's killing it now. Holy crap. That was a pretty good performance, I gotta say. Some, uh, some damage there. I I'm, I'm quite surprised by that. Also, I like how fucking Excalibur theme was playing. So weird, though, that she's a bruiser. Like, what the fuck? That's <laughs> like, it's really not what I was looking for for Morgan there. Alright, let's do some, uh, some solo stuff with these people. We'll go to CCC, I think. We can always do the Kiara fight, too. We have our other account, whatever fights we got available over there. Let's see, that's the nameless one. Let's do this one with Sith. This will be quite the test. Cause didn't Fujino beat this one, but like it was quite it was quite close. And most things not a lot is beat this at neutral. Like really not a lot is beat this at neutral. Okay, now to be fair though, she's not 10 10 10 and that's a big hit here, but So well, if she fails miserably, we'll definitely give her another shot at it once she is 10-10-10. Uh, I'm going to BRB real quick. I, I want to grab some more water.
going to take a quick minute or two here to take care of some health stuff, so give me just a second. I figure why it's up, might as well do it, so. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. <clears throat> so um, I'm kind of biased against Tam Vinch just because I don't really like her characterization and whatnot. But I like, and I have nothing against, the uh, kind of like role she plays, like this kind of ongoing villain that's kind of a side villain that's not really loyal to the main villain. It's got their own, you know, ladder they're trying to climb. However... And I think this is where they're failing miserably, and they're, like, killing the character arc. And I see a lot of anime and video games and light novels and whatever the fuck make this mistake. They don't have any struggles, really, right? It's almost like the plot is handing them each step on the ladder, and it... it, it no, don't do that, right? Like, if you're gonna have that kind of villain... Especially if they're a side villain, but maybe like maybe they're gonna come to the main villain, maybe they're not. You know, you're just like you're not really sure where they're on the story. They need to struggle. You need it needs to feel like you know they're working their ass off. You know, because especially because 
normally characters like that are kind of alone and they're not uh, actually loyal to anyone else and it's kind of them versus the world but they're not the protagonist right and so it's way better when they have their own ups and downs and setbacks and they have to like dig their way through it because then when, at, when they get the big dramatic moment where they do you know get a lot of power and do be the big threat or whatever it means a lot more right and it's a lot more interesting and can make them more relatable and blah 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 right and i feel like they're just failing miserably with finch with that like she's just kind of getting a free ride everywhere because and uh, i think it could be a lot better if uh you know, she had more ups and downs on the road if you will I mean, that wasn't really a setback in Lost Belt 3, though. Like, it, it's like, it, it didn't amount to anything, right? Uh, I think a good example, um, there's that, that, the fucking French show, Wakfu, Wakfu, whatever. It's not a particularly good show, but they have that, that villain, Knox, and, uh, you know, at, on his, like, climb to power, he, you know, he has quite a few setbacks, and every, every single fight scene he has... It looks like he's going to lose, for God's sakes. Although they probably could have had even more setbacks for him, really. But uh, I, I just don't like when they do side villains that way. Because it, it's it's wasteful. You, you make it a lot better. Okay. Uh, what are we... Uh, yeah, he, Nox is like the only thing I like about that show. I don't think it's a particularly good show. But I think Nox is a surprisingly good villain. And is uh, done very, very well, I would say. For the most part. Cause she has setbacks in like her plan working, but she doesn't have like it's not like she loses a fight or you know any you know you're not like oh man she might die here right like that never happens really. <laughs> like I just find her whole story very unsurprising. I'll, I'll put it that way. And characters like that can be really awesome because they can be very surprising and unpredictable. But I find her incredibly predictable. Which I, I it's unfortunate because I think the role she plays in the story is like really cool. I couldn't pee right now. Unless I need to be 10 10 10 for that. Let me check. Nope, she can do it at rank 8. I think we do that. Waste of the heal, but it's a good time to slow down his NP. It's a bad time to use my first skill, though, so I just won't. It's allegedly the dragon, but something weird might be going on there. Right, maybe they already fused, or maybe it's reverse, and it's like the dragon in Vortigern's body. Like, God, like, who knows what the fuck is going on. I'll tell you what, though. I think she has really big solo potential. Now, I will say that her comparison to Fujino here is bullshit. Because, like, like... She's quick. So she's benefiting from this permanent quick up. And it's a really big quick up. So, um... You know, it's like, it's like Calamity Jane keeps up with... Fujino here, but that's just because Calamity Jane has a lot of quick stuff where without it Calamity Jane does not keep up with Fujino. So same deal with uh, With Sith here, but I do think she's gonna have a lot of potential like her first skill is just really good like it's really really good Does anyone else 
don't feel like that animation, that first attack she just did there, is really lazy. And like, they just didn't want to reanimate her ligaments. Like that looks terrible. Like that that could be that could be way better. Like it just felt like a, an excuse not to reanimate her. Wait a minute. We kind of want to break here. Because of the event of the, the stage gimmick, we might. That is true, the quick up does affect uh, NP gain, and that's huge. Yep, and we broke there. See, she wouldn't have been, if she was a neutral, like proper neutral, she wouldn't have broken there. And then our evade wouldn't stop the NP here. So yeah, and, uh, basically, uh, being a quick unit here, it's not as good as counter classing, because you'll still die way faster. But on the damage side of things, it is like counterclassing, and on the NP gain side of things, it's actually better, just because of the, in a way, quick up works. You know, the buster up one is not as impactful, because LOL buster NP gain. Uh, 97%. To be fair, uh, she, would, she would loop her NP here regardless, though, because we're going to over NP so much. Uh, like, we wouldn't NP this turn, but she'd NP next turn with or without the quick buff. She still might fail this though. She's uh, running out of gas, and Emiya has a tendency of uh, one-shotting people. I think I have to uh, invulnerability. I think if I don't invulnerability, I'm going to die this turn. I almost want to do that buster, just because it's a guaranteed crit, but because of the quick up, I guess we do this. But applying another curse would have been really cool, actually. Yeah, and not only do the other Tams not like her, but the other Tams don't like each other either. Like, none of- none of the Tams want to be on a- on a Tarasu again. Okay, the heal here is like our only chance of survival. That- it, that- maybe that's enough. If we live this turn, we actually win. However, it would not surprise me in the slightest if I get deleted here. She definitely would not beat this though if she didn't get the quick buff. Like no, no way. Eh, 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 no, we're dead. Not still not bad though. Um, although actually behind Calamity Jane, who's also quick, but not 10, 10, 10. And if she was 10, 10, it'd be about the same, I suspect. But that's a respectable performance. Certainly not as impressive as Fuji no, but few things are. All right, let's. Who? Uh, I guess we'll do Burger Fest against. This is this is gonna be a slaughter. Um, Maniac, if you happen to be here, could we get the AO one again? We're really going to need that in this one. We are about to die horribly. Like this. This one is so fucked at neutral. We've hardly. We've we've barely ever beaten this one at neutral. Uh, I've done it a couple times, but uh, I don't think this is gonna go very well. We're gonna need a guts. I think we're gonna need a guts CE. To those of you who are about to die, we salute you indeed. That's true. If her skills were 10, she could have gotten her skill back. Uh, I suspect that Sith will beat that stage when she is 10 10 10, but I don't think even at 10 10 10 would she be able to beat it if she wasn't getting the quick buff. I'll say that. But, uh. 
Th that's, again, that's expected. Most things at neutral aren't going to do it without the quick buff, so... Uh, that's not really a, a, a point of shame. I would say her performance is, is quite solid. I do expect her to to be in, in terms of solo. I, I expect her to be kind of in the Calamity Jane area in terms of solo performance. Uh, but her team play should be, I would, I would think, better, although it kind of depends. Calamity Jane is actually way better on a team than people give her credit for. It's just nobody has her and nobody cares, right? Like, Calamity Jane really is a sleeper hit. I'm, she's quite good on a team. Like, she does pretty good damage herself, and she offers some pretty swell support. Although she does need some kind of specific uh, team setups. She's not exactly the most, like, oh, you can slap her on any team ever, right? Not super flexible. But she's basically the least popular female character in the entire game, so... What are you gonna do? And we don't have Maniac on the list again, because this game... Um, Holy, um, wait, that wasn't Holy, excuse me. Uh, Doom, that's not accurate at all. Like, that's not, because I, um, <clears throat> uh, the humanity that killed the type is absolutely not the humanity that is present in any of the Lost Belts, let alone the main timeline or, or any of those things. If you drop type Jupiter in literally any of the things I just mentioned, there ain't nothing in humanity that's going to do jack shit, right? The quote, I air quotes humanity in the notes world is about a billion times stronger than, uh, you know, anything we have available right now. And, uh, so yeah, no, there, there that's, that does not, that does not compute. Now, I'm not saying that beasts can't necessarily keep up with types because we don't really have enough information but that is not an equal like, uh, like uh, equation at all the thing is in that particular universe i don't think beasts even exist because most normal humans are dead and the world is dead i don't think you can even summon servants anymore let alone grains or beasts like they don't even exist over there and if you bring the, the but the, the types exist in all universes, so if you bring those to like any of the universes we actually have access to, uh, their the, the humanity doesn't have a, a chance. And let's be real here, um, most of humanity, even in notes, doesn't have a chance against uh, types. It's really just Edo Edom specifically, and uh, Black Barrel, and the six sisters, right? Those are the only thing, because they literally, they had an army. They had an army of ether liners and um, A rays fighting type Jupiter, and they couldn't even phase it, right? It was like uh, ants trying to attack a, a, an Abrams tank, right? It just, it didn't work. Uh, so, yeah, I logically, off, off of, if we remove plot armor, because let's, let's be real clear here, everybody. Plot armor, the power of the pin, trumps everything, right? So if like X is supposed to be important in in Y story, it, it's it's going to be important, right? So if they're like, oh, alien gods got to be the biggest baddest thing in this story, it's going to be the biggest baddest thing in this story. If they're like, a uh, cardboard box has to beat, you know, fucking sun god, uh, cardboard box is going to win, right? It, it, it just is what it is. Um, but so if we if we remove we remove the power of the pin and, and we look at the established information and we look at the the feats of strength that we have from the beasts, right? And so you compare the beasts to what we have for the types. I would say the types absolutely shit on. The beasts. Now, to be fair, we haven't seen every beast, although we haven't seen every type, but we haven't seen every beast, and like we never saw Tiamat at her full power. And, and Tiamat is really impressive, right? Tiamat's power is nuts and is way stronger than the majority of things we have ever seen in the Nasuverse. 
and we never even saw her at max strength because when you fight her at the end you know she's not on earth anymore and that makes her a lot weaker uh she's really nerfs down there uh and she's still ludicrously powerful right so i mean tia madden is an impressive uh an impressive mama there uh, but I, even what is shown of her and was implied of her, I would say is certainly not on par with what we see for like type Jupiter uh, and stuff like that. Now, I would be disappointed. Let's say you had a fate story. Let's say, you know, years down the line, they make, uh, they make a uh, fate battle axe and uh, it, it, for whatever reason, now we'll say well, fate battle mama and, and, and Tiamat's in it. There we go. Uh, and, and at some point Tiamat fights, you know, type Jupiter or Oort or something. If they had, like, Tiamat get wrecked and it was, it was all like, Oh, look how strong the types are! And they just, like, one-shot Tiamat and, you know, it's all Dragon Ball Z style. I would be pretty annoyed with that, right? I, I would, they should have at least, you know, the, the beasts be, you know, some kind of a, in, in the running there. Especially Tiamat, because Tiamat is definitely shown to be stronger than, like, Guadia and stuff. Um, but anyway, uh, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think they're going to put those beasts in, and also not only uh, everything I just said, but the, we already have some pretty big evidence for this in, in FGO because the alien God right now is possessing, um, beast seven, the end, which is like the stupidest name. But anyway, um, uh, alien God is, is currently possessing a uh, beast seven. And is rather unimpressed by it, and, and and is specifically like, oh, this Oort thing is is a lot stronger, and I, I want to possess that instead. So, and Oort is probably type. Uh, everyone thinks it's type Mercury, but it's probably type Oort cloud, right? Let's be real here. Um, and uh, they even say they've said in, in notes in the material book that Oort is not the strongest type. Uh, and so if if Ort is way more impressive than Beast Seven, and uh, that, that I would definitely think that implies that uh, that uh, that that uh, types are ahead of beasts, and I, I don't think it matters. Even if beasts could somehow be summoned into the Notes universe, I don't think they'd get a power gain. I think they'd get a power drain, right? Because what what actually beats types isn't really humans anymore. Right? They're not really they even that's a big point of notes. They're not really human anymore, right? They've kind of lost their humanity because they've like, you know, they're have combined themselves with so much technology and so much like gene splicing and all that. Uh, there's not really a humanity anymore. You know, there's gun god, but gun god isn't beating gun god cannot beat a type. His gun can. That that's if gun god goes to try to fight a type, you know, let me pull up his sleeves and you know, uh, put up his dukes, and he's gonna get fucking annihilated, right? There's really, there really is no state of humanity that has ever been able to beat uh, a type in any timeline ever. And even though, in a way, you can say they're kind of keeping up with the types and notes, it's not, again, that's not really humanity anymore. So I don't think there's any world where like the beasts would be stronger there and and could actually beat a a, a type. I, I don't really think so. Like, you know, it's mostly Slash Emperor and a certain gun that are, are getting shit done. And, and even then, they're kind of implied to be losing overall. Good old fisticuffs against Type Jupiter, indeed. Because Type Jupiter basically kills all of humanity on his own. Like, what was left of humanity was in, like, that sanctuary city, and Type Jupiter wrecks them like it's nothing. So, like, if beasts are drawing their power, you know, to some extent, you know, a lot of it comes from their original who they are and what their legends are and their noble phantasms and blah 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 blah, but um, you know, if they get a power boost based on how strong, like, humanity is, the humanity, even in notes, isn't actually that powerful, right? They're still just normal people. Uh, and they got wrecked by just one type, so... Uh, type Jupiter is the best, uh, type, by the way. Fight me. Now, they might change this if they ever revisit, uh, types. But I, I really think this. Because they said Ort was not the strongest type. They said that. And I really think the thing that they were ranking above him was Jupiter, even though Jupiter was already dead, right? But, like, what is said about Jupiter, he is clearly the strongest of the types that got any kind of detailing in character material book or in, in, in notes. And if you look at what Jupiter is in the solar system, it just makes complete fucking sense that Jupiter would be the strongest one. I actually think it'd be pretty stupid if Jupiter wasn't. Like, what other fucking celestial body in the, in the fucking, in our solar system should 
be stronger than, than Jupiter. Have, have you seen Jupiter? Like, it's the biggest planet. It's got the, its surface is fucking insane. Okay, type sun. Okay, fair enough. But I don't think that's actually a thing. I, I fuck you guys. But, uh, yeah, I, I do agree the sun, okay, gets to be stronger. But, uh, you know, the, we don't, we literally don't know anything about the sun in the Natsuverse. It is strangely absent. Uh, it probably does have certain, you know, it probably is OP, but I don't know if it even has a type, but, uh, I don't know, uh, that's not even, that's not fair, Chad, they're cheating now. You be quiet about the sun, but I, I do hope they actually expand on that at some point, because it is kind of mysterious how the Natsu versus tight Milky Way, oh, brother, <laughs> anyway, um, it's just like a giant milk carton. Uh, and it just has cosmic power for some reason. Any anyway, um, it is weird that the Natsuverse, not just Fate, but, uh, you know, just the Natsuverse, Tsukihime, uh, all that stuff, it, the backbone of it's like, how do I put this? So, look at Dark Souls. I know I, know I compare everything to Dark Souls, but, like, th this I think is a good comparison. There's a difference between Dark Souls' story and its lore, right? The story is, like, at least for Dark Souls 1, is a lot about, like, the player character and, like, you know, uh, trying to, you know, cling on to what le is left of humanity and, and these kinds of, it's got those kinds of themes and, and, and fighting against the inevitable, blah, 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 blah. You know, that's its story, right? And then there's certain events that take place with like uh, Gwendolyn and, and the NPCs and stuff, and that's kind of the story, right? But then the lore is really different, and it, it, a lot of it took place a long time ago, and the lore kind of informs the story a little bit, but it's kind of in the background. It's not, you know, it's not like in your face, right? It's, it's this really rich, complicated lore with all these gods and different civilizations and that are mostly gone now and all these other things, right? That they, if you dig and you look, that, that's informing the story, but if you just play and look at the story on a surface level, it's not even there, right? It's the same thing for Tsukihime. A lot of Tsukihime is like, lol vampires and tits, but, and chairs, but, you know, when you go behind it all, you know, the, the whole ancestors is all tied to the moon, which is all celestial garbage, right? And that's how fate is. Its lore is almost entirely uh, based around celestial bullshit, right? It's all space nonsense, right? And, and that's true for basically everything in the Natsuverse. You know, Notes is like the oldest thing in the Natsuverse, and it's completely space-based. You know, it's fucking wills of the planets and shit. Uh, you know, uh, and there's just, there's a lot, and in Fate Extra, I mean, Jesus, right? Like, the, everything Nazi-verse related, the back, the, the background lore, the, what's like, what's motivating, like, the, the powers that be, like, the Earth's consciousness and, like, humanity's, you know, consciousness, Alaya, or whatever it's called and stuff, it's all celestial body bullshit, right? That, that's, that's just, it is what it is, right? And so for a universe that, it, where it's background lore, you know, it's backbone, it is all celestial body bullshit, it's really weird that we have almost no information about this this little uh, speck in this guy you might have heard of called the sun, right? Uh, it's weird how absent it is, right? You have all this rich lore for the fucking moon and, uh, you know, the other planets and then Earth and, uh, and fucking the Oort cloud, uh, you know, all this nonsense. But uh, there's literally nothing for, like, the main thing in the goddamn... Uh, solar system, right? And there's a little bit, you know, there's a little bit, but almost nothing. It's very mysterious, and I, I kind of wonder if they're just saving it, or if they haven't even thought about it, or or what. I don't, I don't know what's going on. Nasu doesn't know how to make it a, a good or bad guy. I mean, uh, you know, you could just, you know, do the giant sun. You know, with sunglasses, right? There you go. But, uh, I mean, most of the celestial bodies aren't really seen, right? They're kind of an off, they're like a, a presence, right? You don't really see the crimson moon outside of the moon, right? Uh, and same for, like, the will of the earth and, and so on and so forth. Um, and it's the same thing with the sun. You're not going to really see the sun and, and actually talk to its consciousness or whatever. The only consciousness for these things that you ever fucking get, like, a human understanding of is Venus and they, and they go out of their way to say it's because Venus just happens to be like more on the same it's like the only one that is like can kind of understand humans and is kind of on their wavelength right uh where the most of the like the other planets don't even understand each other like Venus is literally the only one that humans can kind of understand and vice versa 
Um, but yeah, you never really get like you never they never put writing to the humanity's or, or to the Earth's will, right? They never have it like actually speak or any shit like that, right? You, you never really see you direct stuff like that for any of the celestial body bullshit. And the types are just kind of like their avatar, right? It's not it's not them. It's more like their champion. Okay, uh, let's get going. Oh fuck, we're I, I like how we get the buster up. That's <laughs> actually a pretty big boon here. It's not as big of a boon as the quick up because it don't want help our NP gain and, and our Stargen and stuff. But uh, you know, she, her being Ooga Booga, she certainly is gonna appreciate a big buster up here. This this is not planned. I wasn't. Pl I, I only picked these stages because it was neutral. Like, I swear, I picked these stages because they were class neutral. I, I wasn't thinking about the gimmick. The thing is, Isis, they really have implied this. A lot of stuff outside of our galaxy or even our solar system probably operates really differently. That's why, like, foreigners and outer gods are so bizarre and different, right? It, they're, you know, I think the type thing is probably going to be Melky Way specific at least. It, it, it might even just be, um... You know, solar system specific, but we'll see. Um, but yeah, I think going beyond the galaxy. I, I don't think I don't. Th and, and Nasu hasn't even thought about it. But if for whatever reason Nasu wanted to visit, you know, Galaxy Nine Nine Two Dash Five, I don't think it would. Everything in that universe would operate the same way that you know the regular stuff does, because that, that'd be boring. They, they want to try. So they'd want to try something new, right? And and so they probably wouldn't even have types and stuff. And, and again, the Outer Gods are a pretty good example of that, where they're just, they're so different, right, than the typical stuff. And that's kind of the point of them. I'm so mad, though, when they finally started to characterize the Outer Gods, they made them Saturday night, more, like, Saturday morning cartoon villains. Like, fucking... I'd like a Saturday night morning, but a Saturday morning cartoon villains is what they made the Outer Gods now, and I'm so pissed about that. Hopefully they can reclaim their dignity later. The Outer Gods like Earth TV. Okay. I don't have my NP, unfortunately. I can remove her defense buff, though. And I can remove her attack buff. Honestly, her skill set is kind of nice here for that stuff. Like the all the Imperial Privilege Force crap. Um, I guess this one. I wonder if I should have waited a turn to do my second skill though, just I'm whipping the heal. I mean, I just whiffed a lot of health right there. Now, Gwen beat this stage. So, uh, I guess the competition is real here. She's, I, I think she might be able to do it because of her buff removal. That seems really good here. However, her total damage, I think, is definitely going to be lower than Gwen's. Uh, so I don't know. We'll see. And she's also not 10 10 10. I mean, I think Ark is going to be an Fko eventually. Arku Wade, whatever the fuck you say her name. Because, uh, you know, Tsukihime remake. They're gonna collab eventually. I think we have vulnerability this one. If you need her buffs again, which is a good feeling. Nah, I'm gonna BBB. That's a tough choice, but. Or, or once her buster is gone, then maybe we click the other stuff. Besides, we got like so much buster up from the stage gimmick, it really rewards this. Damn it. Ugh. When can we roll Ort though? I know, right? I want regular Archer Herc too. Okay, yeet the defense buff yet again. 
Yeah, command codes apply their effects before damage for the most part. There's a few exceptions, but that's... Uh, oh, oh we're, our music is looping. I don't know why I didn't realize that until now. Anyway, um, yeah, command codes apply their, their effects before damage, where uh, Vergus's second skill applies its effect after damage, which is pretty unfortunate. Right, she has triple guts. That's the big thing here. I almost want to do the heal plus, but crits are... Critting is so good when you've got that giant buster up, because it, it'll double, right? That's massive. Okay, she she's got this. I think I think she's got this. That voted well. Okay, it's actually pointless to do my third skill right now because I'm gonna I need to use it. Oh fuck! I may have messed up. Maybe I shouldn't have used my second skill. I need to get impeded and be able to run it back. That's the thing. So I need my NP. I I need to NP after I get NP'd. That's really big. I don't know though, by BBB I could potentially kill her right now. She has oh fuck, this is complicated. I think I BBB this turn and then I art next turn because Merlin is back then. Like critting going like 2020-40, if I get one crit, it's huge. We have double defense down, bust double buster up, double attack up. Okay, I gotta... Okay, I'm gonna use my third skill, even though the damage cut is wasted here, because I need the NP gain. And hell, maybe I should've done that last turn. NP gain is everything here. Wait, what if I kill her, though? She has triple guts. No, even if I kill her, I still need to get my NP, because I can't target switch unless I have my NP. It'd be really good if I could kill her and NP. Greed! Give me that overkill. Give me that overkill in the art card. Shit. Shit! Not enough. At least we killed it, but we didn't get the overkill. Oh! What's the hit count on this? I think it's three? If it's three, we've got it. Two? We'll see. One. Two. Okay, so it's two. Oh, we got it. Oh my god, there's a burn on us. Thank god we've got this. Okay, can I get enough health? Can we win right now? I think we can win right now. Oh, this is exciting. I'll slow-mo so I don't lose the stage. I think we got it. Is this video worthy? Y'all think? Almost, I kind of want to wait until she's 10, 10, 10 just so it's like a better video, but uh, it's pretty good. Yep, we won. Oh, that's nice. And yeah, regular Grain... Grain? Re regular Gwain uh, beat that stage. That was- that's a really good stage for her though, because she got so much value out of her buff removal. Like, it only removes one buff at a time, but that's really all you need with the Imperial Privilege spam. Like, that stage was perfect for her. Soft Survival was rewarded pretty well, and uh, being able to eat the buffs was such a help. Like, holy crap, that was such a help. Last Encore is a mistake? I agree. The Grain Knight of Harvest. Yeah, there you go. 
Good recovery, uh, Lonely. Uh, let's see. Morgan doesn't seem to be, uh, needing to be tested too much, but I guess we'll give her a go on something. Oh, I know. Hold on. We'll switch accounts. I know what to use Morgan on. Um, that is... That was not proper full screen there, game. So this isn't necessarily an impressive thing to do, but, uh... It's perfect, so... Because not only are we counterclassing, but we have Guts, and Guts is super rewarded in this fight. So we should be, like, totally fine. I miss Mordred. Why is she not in Lost Belt 6? Wait, hope we what, Beastly? Oh, the veil? Yeah, it should be a costume. The bad thing is, it's not already available, so it's a problem. Uh, although, like, wasn't Lee's glasses added a good chunk after? Like, his- because they made that costume for, like, Lee's sunglasses? I, I guess it'll come down to if a lot of people request it. So yeah, I, I definitely want the veil. It was, it's stupid because I thought it was like a minor design shift from APOC, but then in the story she has it and it, it's got the pointy crown and everything. So it's like, what the fuck? Like, I, why did you do that and then not make it at least in stage one? I, I, I guess they just thought they wanted to, you know, like, oh, I want to see her face, right? But like, Jesus, that's why you just do it in one out of three stages. But yeah, she has it in the story, so it's kind of bullshit there. Not exactly the opening hand that I wanted. Yeah, that's true. It could be available later. Good of four for NA is quite soon, isn't it? If JP's not doing anything, oh, when that comes out, I'll definitely play NA for that. I, I love that event. Like, I, f I fucking love that event. It's, it's great. Why, why are we getting these fucked up hands, man? Yeah, if it's in the dead period where we're waiting a month on JP, that would be fine by me. Hmm. I guess I cast this right away. We're gonna get blasted pretty soon. Can she break without using... I shouldn't have cast that. Nah, I think we need to use the stars. I'll save the buster up. I may have messed up the skill order there. That might not have been right. She's got a weird drone. Okay, well, we got plenty of damage. This chair, though. Well, we're not getting crit. Um... Okay, uh, didn't matter. <clears throat> That's not great. Bit of a- bit of a problem there. Gib NP gain. 
Also crit please, damn it. We really needed that crit. That was not as much MP gain as I would have liked. Probably should have done Buster Art Art. If we were 10, 10, 10, we would have our MP right now. <clears throat> we, uh, we might be about to get Rongo Bongoed. We shall see. If she didn't one turn us, uh, if we had gotten one turn before Guts went off there, we would have won for sure. But because she got that, like, she like double bustered, triple attacked us, we got, we got one turn there. I mean, that's not really a normal use of a command spell, because I'm just mimicking if our skills were 10 10 10, so. But, hey, we might win! We might win! No, no, nah. we'd have to crit. If we crit, we, we could win there, but we had no crit chance. So close. She would have won at 10, 10, 10, because we, we, the extra skill ranks would equal more than 15,000 damage. We absolutely would have won at 10, 10, 10. We're about to get uh, hit by a pretty cool looking NP though. Chad, is this justice? Is, is this how it's supposed to be? Have we corrected the timeline? Morgan's ambitions have failed. This is justice, yeah. Oof. She'd be so pissed. She'd be so fucking pissed if she lost like that. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Morgan LaFail, oof. She would won at 10 10 10 though. And she also would have won if we just got a little bit luckier. I'm deaf bringing Lancer Artoria to the Morgan fight. That'd make a good video. That's true. She, the, the CE, that's a good point. The CE wasn't doing too much. If we had a proper CE, we would have won. That was very winnable because like the, the RNG was that's dying so fast, so close on damage, like the, so many things, skill ranks. So that's definitely winnable by her. Okay, let's see. Well, I think we've given all the units, the new units, though, a nice fair shake, so that's nice. Uh, I guess we'll see if they do a part two banner or not. I kind of feel like if... What do y'all... Do y'all think what my... Okay, this is this is what I think. I think we're not going to get another banner for a month. And what's going to... I think what's going to happen is when the, the time gate is lifted, they're going to drop uh, the... Uh, I, I guess it's probably the Lady of the Lake or something, but, like, you know, the, the fake Lancelot and the midget, uh, they're probably going to be released, and maybe something else, right? So fake Lancelot and the midget, and maybe one other thing, will just drop with the time gate, right? And then, like, two weeks later, there'll be the, you know, whatever the fuck new big bad guy, or, you know, Vortigern, uh, or, or whatever, right? There'll be another one. So in total, we're going to get three banners, but I don't think we're getting the second one until the time gate is up. That, that would be my guess. And yeah, Oberim could be in there. It could be, there's all kinds of things it could be, right? Um, but I think it, it won't, if, if Vortigern gets added, he's not getting added for the part one banner of the second half, if that makes any sense. It, it'd be the third one, you know, or the second one of the second half, however the fuck you want to, you get what I'm saying. But I mean, the guy that everyone thinks is Vortigern, it, it does have a silhouette in the section that uh, uh, things are going to be playable, right? So he, he's certainly possible. Oh yeah, we got Kazu. Cause you get a drop, whatever the fuck you say your name. That might be added later, though. It, it'll depend. It could be that we're gonna get a part two banner before the second one drops, and then we get like four banners total. That is possible, right? They might give us another banner in two weeks to kind of hold us over while we're waiting for the, the month time gate. Why did they make it a month time gate? It should have just been a week or two weeks. Right? Like, honestly, I, the more I've thought about it, I actually support the idea of them fragmenting main story a bit. Because that way, people that want to sit down and read every bit of dialogue and take their time, they don't feel rushed, right? And because there's always that guy that blows through the entire story in two hours, 
and take screenshots or video of every single major boss and every new enemy that might be a, a new playable character later and stuff. And that, that shifts the player base's focus onto that. And a lot of the detail in the story isn't really on the hype train, right? Where if you kind of slow it down, you know, it kind of, you, you, it's not everything at once, right? You don't see the mid boss, the, the new servants, the end boss and potential servants for later all at once, right? You kind of just get the, a few things at a time. But time gaining it like this is ridiculous, right? But I, I think doing it like, if you want to, let's say it's 30 chapters or 25 chapters and you want to split it into three parts. So there's two waiting periods and it's one week each. That's fine. That's reasonable because that gives people plenty of time to digest what's there and to theorize and speculate and, and then focus on the, the new stuff that's available in that part. The only thing that worries me about that, and this is why you maybe shouldn't do this, is if they started doing that kind of thing moving forward, they tried to always make sure in each part at least one cinematic thing happened. And, and you know, they, they try to like make the story have a, a one, two, three, you know, beat kind of. And that wouldn't always fit every story. And so that could potentially be a problem. But yeah, I don't really mind them splitting up the story if it's in smaller chunks though. Like don't make, waiting a month is ridiculous, but waiting a week I think is fine, right? Cause look, it's taken us a few days to really just go through all this and everything. And you know, they have the speculation and stuff. And then you have a few days where you wait and then it comes out. I think that would be fine. Waiting a month though is just crazy. I don't, I don't, I think that's just gonna kill more hype than anything. And, uh, but it does, it did give people time to speculate and actually, you know, not just see everything all at once, which, you know, that I'm okay with. Like, normally you wake up when a new story comes out, and, you know, if you don't hide from the internet, you're going to be spoiled on literally everything, right? Yeah, at least it's not six months. Yeah, that's true. I want Vortigern to look like Mordekaiser. I agree. I, I agree. I, I want that, too. And then in his NP, he transformed into his dragon form. Like, let's fucking go. That would be so badass, but I don't think that's going to happen, but we'll see. Um, let's see, chat. I, I might play a bonus- I might do a bonus stream today. We haven't done that in a while. Um, there's always Darkest Dungeon, and there's Genshin, because I haven't touched Genshin in forever. As much- I want to play Darkest Dungeon, but I do want to play Genshin as well. I think we'll play some Genshin, because I haven't touched the event, and it, it's- it's gonna pass me by. So I think what we do is we do Genshin today, and then if, uh, if I'm feeling good tomorrow, uh, we'll do Darkest Dungeon tomorrow. And then maybe I'll play some Ninja Gaiden the day after, right? And then maybe uh, Genshin again, right? And we kind of mix it up a bit. But yeah, I want to check out the whole Island event stuff. Uh, so, okay. I think that's enough for FGO today. Thank you all for hanging out. I, 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 I will say, the new units really do have good gameplay, right? Their designs are not exactly my cup of tea. I, I will say this. I like them significantly more now that they're like their own characters and they're based on these, you know, British folklore stuff and Irish folklore stuff, right? Uh, I like them a lot better because of that. You know, the, the, being Burger Fest and Sith Lord, I think it's just so much better than Ginger Bin, uh, Knights of the Round. So that made me like them more, but they're still just not my cup of tea. And, uh, but it's not, it's, you know, it, it's better than it was at least, but uh, I'm still not a big fan of Lost Belt 6's story and pacing and all that nonsense. But their gameplay is great, and uh, it's certainly unique. I, I'll, I'll give them credit. They did a good job of not power creeping the game, but still making the units interesting and good. So overall, good design. But okay, uh, let me switch over to for Genshin. And for those that you know aren't interested in watching Genshin Impact, you know, fair enough. Uh, I'll be streaming more Fgo tomorrow as long as I'm healthy, and uh, hopefully I will see you all then. All right, let me. Uh, Get Genshin roll in here. I'm actually kind of excited to play some Genshin though, just because it has been a while and I haven't I haven't even seen the event story for crying out loud. Oh god, apparently yeah, there's an update, but thankfully it's very small, so it's not gonna take any time. Let me change the uh, stream title and all that. Chat, what if, what if, what if FGO, um, you know, sticks the landing with the second part of the story and like Aggravain's in it, Percival's in it, Vortigern's in it, and then like there's cool plot developments and, and this, that, and the other, and, and like good boss fights, and, and, and it's all, it's all great, and, and Morgan gets her veil, right, and, and then, and then the anniversary comes around and they add really good quality of life improvements, the command code UI gets fixed. Uh, 
uh, the the fucking uh, you know ad like story replay right and the ad like a, a, another popular servant and and you're, you're dreaming that but it could happen right like they can they can turn this ship around man it, it, it's not even hard I, I do think though uh, there I think Agravane actually is going to be in the second half I I I, th I think so I think Agravane and Percival are going to be in the second half I think I think that's going to happen can happen in our dreams but yeah i don't know about the uh the anniversary stuff i don't i don't know about uh that end going well that that that's probably copium i mean the, okay here we go the update is done there we go all right uh there's a lot of nights of, well okay first off uh, the Green Knight is not a Knight of the Round, and in no version of his story is he. Now, in some of his older stories and such, he is antagonistic to Arthur's court, but in a lot of the other ones, he's not. He, but even when he is friendly to them, he is still not part. He is never portrayed as far... I mean, there might be some random-ass story out there that, you know, no one read, but as far as I'm aware, no major stories with the Green Knight ever have uh, the Green Knight as actually part of Arthur's court. He just cooperates with them. Um, uh, he's pretty much always portrayed kind of as a mysterious figure, normally more tied to like the land and, and that kind of thing, uh, more so than being like loyal to uh, like a specific king or anything. And the, the, er the early stuff, uh, he was like with Morgan, but that, that's not really, uh, in, that's not in very many stories with him. But yeah, he's not a Knight of the Round Table. As for Knights of the Round Table, there's several of them. Like, uh, it's different Arthurian legends, though. There's different knights that are and aren't Knights of the Round. And so how Fate's going to handle it is kind of weird. But, you know, they don't have Percival. They don't have Agravain. They don't have Bors. Um, there's two other ones that I cannot remember their names of that I know they don't have. Uh, and I'm really kicking myself right now because I can't remember their names. They're definitely lesser known ones, though. Uh, they don't have K, which I swear one of these days... I hope Percival's not boring. That would make me very sad. Like, that that would suck. All right, before we do the story here in Genshin, let me, uh, I need to do my dailies, and I need to just kill something to use up my AP. Are the daily bosses back? No. Uh, what about the big, big boy? I don't think I did him yet. Fucking hate this boss, but it's something. I, I've barely done anything. All I did was light the beacons in the event. That's all I did. Yep. Uh, K is my favorite, uh, I would say, for the Knights of the Round and, and FGO. Uh, for the real legends, I'm not really sure who my favorite is. I like Bors, honestly. Um, and I guess it depends on the story, right? They're portrayed pretty differently by different writers and, and such. All right, what do we want to try here? I didn't even look at what the element colors were. I should go back. Kind of important. Ice and water. Okay. Well, Diluc going to be good here. Uh, we'll do that. Let Let's, uh... Wait, no, she doesn't really have gear, though. Ah, eh, fuck it, we'll do it anyway. I didn't... The boy. Did they, didn't, wasn't Genshin adding a new boss? Was that what the update was? Did they add the new boss today? Man, I'm so behind on Genshin, it feels bad, dude. <laughs> Been busy. One of the best patches so far? Really? Why is my health so low? Gonna do the side bash. Teamwork is dream. Time for retribution. Ah, I messed that up. This boss sucks. It's one of the only bosses I don't like. I don't really like the cubes either, but it's more like they're just too easy. Yeah, fuck this boss. He's lame. Giant stat check. Must... 
I fucked that up. Like I just face tank that because you can't really dodge it. Oh, what am I doing? Fuck! Thankfully, I had a shield there, so it didn't do too much damage. Uh, no, I don't like I don't I don't like the water boss either. Good point. I forgot. I blocked that one for my memory. That is, you know, you can overstat it, and there's ways to trivialize it so it's not annoying, but it's just badly designed, right? Like it's so many characters cannot kill the hawks. Like no matter what they do, they cannot kill the hawks. I think that's terrible design. It's it's honestly so bad, I, it, and it's so in contrast to the rest of the design that. I, I just, I don't understand, right? I don't understand why it is like that. Space tanking, because this boss rewards that. I think it's because it's so easy to, oh my god, what am I doing? It is so easy to overstat a lot of the other bosses that they've kind of made these giant stat checks. But I care more about like good move sets that are fun to dodge and interact with, and, uh, and just give them a better stat line. Or I, if I want, if I want to, I can just lower my own stats to make it fun. I don't, I don't like the stat checky fights at all. Yeah, they fixed the water boss for an event, and then you can't fight that version anymore. It's like okay, great. Oops. Oh my god, the placement of these has been ridiculous. Steady as stone. Time to clean up. Well, got this. Everybody stand. Someone needs assistance. I blocked way too soon there. I kind of forgot what movie was doing. Oh yeah, that, that's, 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 that's fair game. Oh my god. I literally did my ult because I didn't want to switch and die to like some random bullshit. Let me eat! Yeah, I'll just face tank it. It's fine. Fun and enthralling gameplay. And you get pushed into the water. Okay, that was a little nasty. Can you die? Thank you. Get out of here. Ugh, that boss. Nothing uh, too special there. Yeah, if you remove the hawks and the time limit, it'd make the water boss a lot better. It's still not great. This boss doesn't deserve such a good battle theme. Yeah, his music is pretty good. You know, I don't. I like the boss's like look. It's not the coolest dragon I've ever seen, but it's it's all right, and the music is good. And uh, some of the visual aspects of it are good, but the gameplay is shite. Yeah, if you take too long in the water boss fight, a uh, water pool just spawns underneath you that you cannot dodge, and it just does an insane amount of damage and will pretty much kill one character. So if you like try to stall it out or take forever to kill the hawks or whatever, uh, you'll, you'll just die. And it, I think they patched it. I think it, you, the time limit used to be um, shorter. I'm pretty sure it takes a lot longer to do that now. Every time, though, they make more stat-checky content, I'm just like, why? Right? Like, the game doesn't... 
Like, sure, you know, give the bosses enough health and damage to be threats, but you should be able to dodge everything, right? Right. Whoops! Oh boy, that could have gone bad. How did that- how did he- how is he alive right now? It's a hilly troll. What are we doing here? Maybe I need- <laughs> what the fuck? Tough guy, I guess. I should switch in people that I actually need to get bond points with. The thing is, Bido is just really fun to play, though. I hear you've got a job for me. At least do that. She's almost bond 10. See ya, TG. So guys, Elden Ring is an open world game. Does that mean it's a- what the fuck? Does that mean it's a Breath of the Wild clone too? I, I swear, it's like people have never played an open world game before. Clearly. I hope it's good. It should be. I mean, FromSoft generally knows what they're doing when it comes to that style of game. So, uh, I've seen a lot of people, you know, s you know, comparing it to the hype around, uh, cyberpunk, but I don't think that's a, a, a very good comparison because now it, it is equally foolish to get blindly hyped for something, right? Uh, no matter what, who's making it, what type of game it is, it doesn't matter. But the thing is, uh, CD Projekt Red was going around, you know, marketing the game and doing interviews and stuff and trying to hype it up. And it was so obvious that it was just PR bullshit talk. I mean, it was obvious, right? Like, I, I saw that shit coming a mile away, where uh, From's not really doing that at all. They're barely even talking about Elden Ring. So I think people are hyped for it just because of From's track record. I, I think that's the main reason, so... Now, that being said, it's still totally possible that Elden Ring could suck. Uh, absolutely. I realize if, if you put a character that... Is a request wait is a required quest into your home area you are locked out until you finish the quest what, what? can you put like npcs in your home now uh, i i gotta remind everyone i haven't played genshin in a little in a little while so i i literally have no idea what you're talking about Uh, I do agree, though, that Elden Ring has kind of been put into that spotlight for, like, the hyped game that's in the mainstream, you know, conscious. And a lot of times that, uh, you know, put, puts things on a pedestal they're never going to live up to. Uh, you know, people always act like every next great thing is the best thing it's, you know, since sliced bread. But, um, you know, again, Cyberpunk had a lot of, like, bullshit PR surrounding it where Elden Ring doesn't. I don't even know, I don't even know why Elden Ring got so popular because sir FromSoft ever since Dark Souls you know FromSoft has had a spotlight on them and FromSoft was a pretty huge like cultural hit for gaming right even though not everyone played it, it it's such as it was a very significant game even though at the time of its like initial release it wasn't even that big I mean it was successful but it wasn't like you know Call of Duty or anything right um but they've kind of always been that like, really, FromSoft games sell well, but they never sell, like, a big Call of Duty game or something like that, right? They generally do really, really well. Yeah, I guess Jar 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 Martin is big. I didn't really think of that. Um, that's a good point. Uh, even still, though, uh, it is crazy. Elden Ring has clearly got way more hype around it than any of the other FromSoft games up to the release have had. And that's kind of strange to me. But, uh... I hope they don't trip, and I, if there's any developer that I think that could deliver in this circumstance, I do think it is from Soft. You know, I don't like every decision they've ever made. Of course not. I mean, Dark Souls Two has got some questionable decisions in it, um, but uh, yeah, we'll see. I'm excited. You know, I'm, I'm excited, but I'm, I'm certainly I never give my give get my hopes up for new video games. You know, I, I've, I I'm well aware the industry can be full of shit, so I hope it's good. And if it's not, I'll. Uh, 
You know, I'm, I'm not I'm not gonna be copium, right? I, I'm aware games can suck, and if it sucks, I'll say it. You know, I wanted Lost Belt 6 to be the best thing ever, and and it was disappointing to me. I think it's honestly, I think that's an unpopular opinion, right? I think it's a I think it's a popular opinion to not really hype Lost Belt 6 in specifically my circle, right? Because my circle for FGO is a lot of people that really do like gameplay and boss fights and 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 designs that are a bit more down to earth and you know more like Achilles. Right, but I think for the community at, at large, uh, they don't like it when you criticize anything in FGO. Honestly, my God, I've gotten some comments and DMs from because I've criticized uh, Lost Belt Six. Yeah, I, 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 I would hope most of the community is a little eh about the gameplay, but I, I imagine most of the community is like, eh, I don't really care. I, I bet you the majority of the community is like, oh, hey, because I even saw. I haven't really looked at what the community's been saying, but I saw on like Reddit someone was saying like, you know, hey, every stage is so fresh and different and interesting, and I'm like, it's so boring and autopilot and you can't lose. But uh, uh, so I don't, I don't know. But yeah, I haven't, uh, I haven't looked into it too deeply. FGO is the best game. Nothing is wrong. A safety net would make them lose money. Yeah, yeah, that, there is that mindset. But yeah, I think some people just conflate criticism with like attacking them personally and also like hating the thing. I don't hate FGO. Like, I have spent so much time playing it and I. Like, I. I it really bugs me too because. Uh, now, sure, some people aren't like aware of like the content I make for FGO and all that, but I don't. I really don't think I could make the videos that I make if I didn't like the game, right? I think you can make informative videos about a game that you don't care about, like you can make them soullessly and do it for the money or whatever, but I, I truly don't think I could make the videos I make for FGO, at least most of them, if I didn't like the game, right? Where I, like, I try to, you know, pick music that really fits, I try to do boss fights with units that I really like or that are really thematic or, you know, that, that, I, just, I don't, there's, I couldn't do it, man. I, I would get, I'd get so annoyed if I tried to be creative and everything like that, and, and I, if I didn't care, it would just never work, right? And I would hope that's obvious, right? There's no... I don't see how anybody could make the kind of videos I do with they if they didn't like it, right? Why was that saying immune? Oh, I guess it's the grass. That's probably why. Okay, I think I got one more of these to do. Oh, no, no, we're done. Okay, finally. Get that shit out of here. Uh, I know of the Elemental Reaction buff, and I played a little bit when they first dropped that, and it was quite nice, but uh, I haven't messed around with it much. I basically played... I played like one day, because the, the, the Genshin Impact, like the initial patch dropped, and I did like the intro quest to the event, and I used Vito a little bit with the Elemental Reaction stuff, but then, then it was Lost Belt dropped, and uh, no, actually no, then, then Ninja Gaiden dropped, and then Lost Belt dropped and everything, so I just, I've been really behind. And boy, I, I'm looking forward to playing more, uh, more Ninja Gaiden though. Before we go to the event, I need to go to my teapot. I bet you I've been whiffing that. I don't know why I put her on that one, but it doesn't really matter. I really wish you could get to your teapot in a more reasonable UI. Oh yeah, these are from the Abyss mode, right? I always forget you get these from the Abyss. Okay. Oh yeah, Genshin I, I does a good job with putting out content and doing little filler things and just pa their, their pacing is good. Uh, Genshin's pacing is very good. Would you care to God, I probably finished making these a while ago, but uh, oh well. More Hilly Troll stuff, that's good. 
I can't wait to actually set up my teapot the way I want to, but I'm waiting until I unlock a few specific things before I uh, go for it. Do I need to buy something to get a fourth one? No, there's a bunch that I don't have. Okay. What, what is this? You do not have any companions seated. How do you seat companions? You, you would think it would be clicking this. That, that would be... Let's not be F go with the UI now. F7? The fuck? Why, why don't you just click it there? Th this is some F go shit right now. What the fuck? Oh, it's in this, this... There, who would... What? It, it, are they like items? I am so confused right now. You have to decide where to place them? I am so confused. Is there a UI tab that I'm missing here? It says companion. Oh, companion. Oh, okay. That is so not... Okay, wait, so if you put them in here, can that mess with stuff? Like what Poi Poi was saying? And what does it do? Do they get, like, uh, friend points in here? And can you still use them in the open world? Because if you, if you can't use them when they're in here, that'd be pretty annoying. Free bond. Let's see, well, Rosaria is almost uh, bond 10, so I'll slap her in here somewhere. Doesn't, doesn't even matter, just... Uh, how do you... Can you not put her there? Huh, weird. You can still use them? Okay. Uh, child is already bond 10. Uh, I guess we can... You have reached your furnishing limit. Oh, okay, well, whatever. <laughs> the count is furniture. Oh, uh, that's funny. So they just chill here and get bond for free, huh? Interesting. Would you care Wait, is she already bond 10? I'm confused. Maybe she, she might have gotten bond 10 today then. So I know she was bond 9. Whatever, I'll worry about this later. In-game music? Oh yeah, sure. I had my music playing, but I actually turned it off, so yeah, we'll, we'll hit up the in-game music, why not? Nah, nah, fuck it. I'll, I'll, I'll use my music. Unless there's like some new stuff that's good. I'll turn the- if we fight the boss, which I doubt we'll get to today, because I haven't been playing the event, but if we- if we do fight the boss, we'll check out its music if it has any. Okay. Boss is not out until tomorrow. Uh, I've barely touched the boat event, so I have, like, no opinion of it. The tiny bit of it that I played, though, I thought was fine, so... Where is my boat? I know you can summon it at, like, the docks. Blah, blah, blah. Does it tell you where it is? Cause surely I left it somewhere. I get is is it right there? Oh god, it's right there. I guess I have to go to one of the docks then to summon it. Oh, is the new boss out on like JP or China? I'm telling you, all the like, content creators that want to get dim views on YouTube pretty much have to play the other versions of the game so they can like get videos ready faster. Because speed is kind of everything with that kind of thing. Let me know if I need to twink the volume on anything, chat. Like, if you can hear it. It's actually pretty scenic here. here. I'm always paused if I need to turn the in-game sound up a little bit. Oh, I still have Dex running, excuse me. We're behind the curtain, chat. The four beacons have been lit. 
but we still don't know what trials may lie ahead. <sighs> the weather's so nice. Is it? <laughs> Look at it. I know we can't afford to drop our guard, but I can't help but enjoy the summer. I want to catch fish. Klee, this isn't Mondstadt. Please be careful. Oh, I understand. Wait, because Mondstadt is so safe with all the aggro slimes and hilly trolls with giant axes and the abyss order. You know, it, it's so safe there. Just, just watch. We'll just fight the same enemies here that we always fight. Exactly is Dodo King. Yes, it is also my first time here. This may not sound fair to Klee, but my primary duty is to protect everyone. Finding this overlord is secondary. Also, the sudden appearance of this letter, these islands that are inaccessible by ordinary people, it's too much of a coincidence. Why would this sort of invitation be sent to a child? I, I feel like, uh, She's a little stressed. It's truly unbelievable. I also mustn't be careless. Well, what are we all waiting for? Let's start exploring the area. Paimon's right. We should take advantage of the clear weather to reassess our situation. Leave it on a mysterious island. I have no worries as long as you're here. <sighs> so, should we go swimming first? What? How did you get to that conclusion? Happy go lucky when she sees such beautiful scenery. Traveler, please feel free to explore. I'll be at the ready if there is any sign of danger. I hope this island doesn't give us too much trouble. All right. Was that the original time gate that I just hit right there? Like that was the day one time gate? We get a bigger cannon. Heavy cannon, interesting, okay. What is this? Main cannon, make ready fire. Use your boat thing to destroy the monster's floating structures. That doesn't seem relevant to anything that they just said in the story, but okay. I guess that's mostly for funsies. What is go any of this? I feel like I'm really behind on this event. Also, this UI is atrocious. We can rest a bit. Like, it keeps going back and you just want to, like, go to the next thing. That's kind of messed up. You have to wait until the next morning. Okay, well, let's do that hilly troll thing first. You know, I feel like hilly trolls are not treated very fairly in this game. But the Daryl's a good guy. He protects us. I've told you, it's too dangerous. Hey, where are you running off to? Okay, isn't there a thing to summon your boat around here? I guess it's on the other side. I, I will say, they really could use just like a button to summon your boat. A little wonky with the way they do it. I mean, just because some humans attack you doesn't mean you should blindly murder all humans. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And a lot of times you're literally trespassing. We can't let you think we These things are everywhere. Man, what the fuck? Where is the dog thing? I guess it's these, but there's one right there. I don't even. This makes no sense to me, like the way they do the... How you summon your boat. It's so, like, needlessly specific. God. Okay. Get the initial D music. Did I already find this? I feel like I already did this puzzle. Yeah, I think I did. That's kind of a far way off, but uh, we'll make it work.
Yeah, they had a I, they had a achievement called Deja Vu. I saw that. It didn't dong on me though until my chat said something. They, they really should have added better sound effects to the boat and had like have it go a little bit faster and have like more waves that you're making like more like a jet ski. And then ha they could, literally could have put in some music that's like a parody. That'd be pretty good. Because they do like the they do like the, the like wind effect when you hit the dash button, but it doesn't really feel like you're going that fast. Like let's be honest. Because we're not we're we're not going that fast. <laughs> That's definitely a part of it. But yeah, the feedback from the water is a a big part of. And making something feel fast in a, in a water-based thing. I just missed entirely. I think it was saying like, this will make my cannon stronger or something. Bunk. That Guilty Gear music. I know Guilty Gear just came out, but not been that interested in Strive to be honest. Because what? What is this aim? Is Paimon the gunner? Because that would explain- that was like some drunken shooting right there. Anyway, I'm not that interested in Strive because one, I've never liked Guilty Gear as much as Blaze Blue, but also almost all the Guilty Gear characters that I like aren't in Strive, so... Oh, I guess that's not destroyable. I would say this boat combat is kind of trash. What, what does this do? Is this bad? That seems bad. Like, I, I think I just took an insane amount of damage to my ship there. Here, let's, uh... Get him the old-fashioned way. God damn it, auto-targeting. Although, I guess it worked out. Oh, the poor hilly troll. Yeah, some of the redesigns in Strive, I don't mind, but uh, pretty much none of them do I like better than the original, right? Like, I don't like Kai's design, like, from the old, the, not not the older games, but the newer old games, that makes any sense. I like, Kai's design was best in the 2D games, right? And then when they redesigned him for the 3D games, I didn't really like it. And then his re redesign here, I think, is better, but I don't really hype it. And uh, that's kind of how I feel about most of them. I'm guessing this is the content we were supposed to be doing when we were waiting for the time gate to lift. So I'll just do a little bit of this, and then we'll do the main story. What? No, no. Okay, we're good. The enemies in boats would be way more fun. I don't really have a lot of time for fighting games anymore because fighting games, if you want to get good at them, are a huge time sink. And uh, I, I, I just ain't got, ain't got time for that these days. But if a fighting game ever comes out that's really up my alley and I like the roster and it happens to come out when I have more time and I'm not, you know, playing other stuff, maybe F goes not doing anything, and, then, you know, I, I could get into one for a while. I think that could happen. I feel like the thing to do is just drive around, m literally mash the attack button, don't even aim, and, and then just drive into the cooldown things. Which is not exactly the, uh, the most entertaining. I don't know why, it's because of Unlimited Codes, but this song always makes me think of Kodamine specifically. Even though it doesn't fit him individually, this would never be like Kodamine's theme, right? Of course not. But this song always reminds me of Kodamine, just because, I, I don't know, Kodamine did a lot in Unlimited Codes, I guess. That did not work out.
We should at least play the. Do you all think we should stream the Melty Blood game? Like, I don't think I'd really have time to like really get into it hardcore. But you know, it'll have a story and everything, and we could stream that and stuff. Although maybe not. Some fighting games get really anal about that, which is ridiculous. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's 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 fairly fate related. I, I think that'd be fine. I wish. I don't think roast beef is in it. Uh, I, I, that seems very unlikely to me, but I, I, I wish she was. Because she was my favorite character in Melty Blood for sure. And if she was in it, that would increase her odds of being playable in FGO down the road if they ever did a Melty Blood. That would be awesome, dude! I, I would roll on, on roast beef uh, if she was in FGO. That'd be fucking cool. Although she'd also need to be a shielder, and they're certainly not doing that. random crate there so they told me about that wind barrier but I didn't actually pay attention so rip those guys this is not very engaging I'm not gonna lie this is like busy work it's not the worst thing I've ever done, but uh, definitely not the best either. Why would you place explosive barrels around your windshield if they're vulnerable to the explosive barrels? They had all the time in the world to remove those barrels from uh, the area. Also, if they can't swim, how did they get here? A lot of these guys. I'm guessing these she shells are for like the event currency. Okay, I'll do one more of these and then we'll move on to the uh, the uh, story. They ride their shields. Did you say barrel? Yeah. Dude, so I hope so I don't think his servant is um, is Sith, right? She's she's not even a servant. She's just part of the Lost Belt, and she's like more related to Morgan, I think. Um, but he he works with her, right? They get along. So I'm hoping when you fight Beryl, you fight her and him, right? Because then it's an archer, and then I can use Kanus very easily, and uh, get some revenge, right, for Wadim, right? It'll be great. But, uh, I don't know, they, that might, they might have, like, a fight like that, but then when you fight him for, like, the final time, whoever his servant is, it, it will finally probably be revealed by then, and, uh, that's probably the one you fight with him at, at the end. But I don't know, maybe he killed his servant or something stupid. Not the... There we go. Frickin' whirlpool. Turn this ship around. Literally nothing I just said was about Kazu Drop being an archer. Why am I shrinking just this guy? We, we're missing right now. Okay, I, I should get out of the boat. Man, spear characters have the dumbest plunge attack. It's like delayed and a bit silly. What? Good aim on that one. God damn it. That happens if you try to use her ult against a wall and it, it'll do that. I don't know why I thought jumping would work. Maybe his servant's aggravane. That'd be cool. Although, you know, I guess he, well, I guess he's new in terms of being rated up, but he wouldn't be new to like the story. They seem to want to use new people, right? But in a way he's new because he's never been rated up. All right, did that did that like win any of the stuff we were supposed to win? This 
God, this event's UI is just a mess. Alright, there's quite a bit more of these to do, but uh, I'll worry about that later. This event is going for a while, so I'm sure I can catch up. I hope so. There's just so much stuff going on with gaming right now. What is all of this nonsense? This is exactly what I don't want out of an event, by the way. Good God. Anyway, let's go over here. Would Aggravate and Barrel even get along? Probably not, but that's never stopped them before. They have some things in common, but they, I don't think they would get along. I mean, they've de hinted at Aggravain being uh, in the same area as Percival. So I think there's a chance that he's going to be in this Lost Belt. And if he is, surely they would make him summonable. Yeah, one month is too long. It's kind of dumb. I think a week would have been really good. It'd be one thing to wait a month if they, if it was like, like if they'd been a month between Lost Belt 5-1 and 5-2, sure. But we only got nine chapters. We got, I mean, we got nine chapters. No boss fights worth a fuck. Uh, and then it's like, yeah, now wait a month. Right? Like, what is that? Yeah, there's probably a Mev fa face in uh, in Lost Belt Six, because you know that we need that to take up a slot. All right, I think we have to wait until morning. Yep. He's not there in the flesh, but, uh, he is there. Oh, it has to- excuse me, it's- it's morning, but it's not morning enough for them. People though that got event costumes, you know, change though. That's 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 how it works. We changed into summer clothes. Although we didn't come here to have fun, we don't want to miss out on a beautiful summer day by the sea. Uh, this doesn't look weird, does it? Is that a giant rubber ducky bag? Such light and summery clothing definitely doesn't suit me. <laughs> uh, pardon me. Really? Thank you, Traveler. It's surprising that Master Jean would specially pack summer Chat, clothes. are we gonna get a Hawaiian shirt coup this summer? Because it's soon. Summer's soon and the anniversary's soon. Oh, <laughs> no. No? God damn it. Someone's gotta have faith. Lisa and I picked them out for her. Learning how Big Sister and Nurse and we are singing? I was drunk on summer already. There's quite a story behind these summer clothes. I thought Lisa's pouch was to be used for an emergency. I didn't expect it to contain a set of summer clothing. All these accessories, too. Definitely Lisa's handiwork. Everyone in the Knights of Favonius is always trying to have me take leave. I suppose I do push myself too much. I wish we could get uh, some scenes of Kaya in charge of Mondstadt. Like, I... God, I, that would be amazing. I would rather have the event be about what's going on in Mondstadt with Kaya instead of this, to be honest. Everyone, come over here. 
We probably should add the Copium on mode at this point. It's become pretty popular. Please voice. I, I can look into that actually after the stream. I saw something weird. Huh? What's going on? What do you mean by something weird? Hey Zal, you missed all the, the good times for F Go, but uh the ocean. doing some Genshin now. See? There's something weird floating on the water. That narrow device. It seems to be a buoy, but we didn't see anything when we arrived. Big ass fucking buoy there. <gasps> Dono King must have put them there. Strange devices that just appear overnight. By the way, they were there before, so I don't know what they're talking about. Well, since he hasn't revealed himself to us, does that mean he's changed his mind? I mean, Caster Gill's got a costume. Maybe these buoys are a clue, and he's waiting for me to find him. So could that be why these buoys have suddenly appeared? Right. We won't solve anything by guessing on sure. Um, I mean, there's only nine chapters available. I, there, there was a couple of fights that were kind of a thing, but not really. I mean, gameplay-wise, there wasn't much. Uh, Caster Koo showing up was cool, though. Is it okay to go out there, though? Although he's only in it for like nine seconds. Perhaps. But we must investigate the buoys regardless. It's hard to say what will be waiting for us at sea. Just in case, prepare yourselves for combat. I liked the disaster, you know, because that was, from what I understand, it was like a lot of really bad weather in that area that resulted in like that terrible tra train crash and stuff like that. Uh, that. That getting personified as a monster thing, that was cool, you know, and, and I, I don't mind like the folklore angle stuff, but uh, yeah, so far it's been kind of blech. Once you are ready, please assemble here. And we'll head over on the boat together. Uh, not at all. This is just my duty. Now then, I'll entrust the preparation efforts to all of you. Okay. Where did I park the boat? <laughs> I need to bring jumpy bumpies, Doroko. Must have placed those things in the ocean. He's a bad guy, but I will bravely face him and do my best for Donoko. I'm so confused as to what the actual story is. Like, I, 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 what the hell is going on? Hmm? Is there anything I can do? Oh, I just want to say that the ocean here is beautiful. Sea and sun. I don't think she even cares. Come true. I really want to have a seaside performance. It would be amazing. I just know it. I'm sure someone out there likes Lost Encore more than Zero. Now, it's not me. Uh, but I'm sure somebody. Because I actually I know people that don't like Zero because it's too dark and blah 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 blah. I seriously never see Fate Zero as all that dark. I mean, it's not all sunny and rainbows, but. Also, I'm sure someone likes Last Encore literally just because of Nero. These islands are isolated from the outside world. Like a secret domain crafted by nature itself. We were guided here by the letter, and with the assistance of Venti and Devalin. Everything seems a bit too serendipitous. I'm a little concerned. I, be I, I, I just started the event, so I have no idea. So people are saying it's good, and apparently there was a patch today that was really good. But I'm here to protect you all, so please don't worry. Come what may, I will face it head on. There's a new boss tomorrow. Have you finished your preparations? Great. Then let's head to the boat. I feel like uh, we could have just skipped a step there, but... Uh... I don't know where the boat is. There's too many icons in this fucking event. I guess it's the anchor. Sakura's not really the plot device. It's Angra with that that is you know through Sakura. That's the plot device. Uh, I would say. Really, just all of that stuff was pretty bullshit. 
Shinji Vortigern Perso uh, Pursuto Servant. You shut your whore mouth. That's awful. I think we will get some Rasputin in Lost Belt 6. Um, I doubt, though, it's going to be, like, his main thing. I think he'll, uh, survive it and... What, what is going on here? They say investigate it, but I can't climb it, and I can't interact with it. I'm supposed to shoot it? it like That's not investigating! That's that's not investigating. That's polluting. What are we doing? Like like I'm sure magically because plot you know bullshit that what we're doing is going to be the, for the best. But like this, there's random things in the water that you know nothing about. Let's blow them up. Surely that couldn't have any repercussions that could be bad. And what about the like wildlife here? Like goddamn. Investigate the mysterious devices, aka vandalism and, and pollution. Like, for all we know, that could have been like seals keeping in some ancient catastrophe. Guess there's gonna be a lot more landmass. The boat! Why would this be tied to three random things in the water? What the hell is going on? Yeah, yeah, we we saw that. We 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 don't we don't need the uh, play by play. <laughs> go the king, go the king. I'm gonna catch you. <laughs> Looks like Kree's as energetic as ever. Before the ground started shaking, I heard the sound of machinery. I believe there may be an immense mechanical structure under this region of the ocean, with the entire archipelago situated on a mechanical framework. It could be activated to raise each island from beneath the water. Something like that would be nothing short of a miracle. Could it be the power of the animal Archon Barbados? I don't know about that one. Mm, probably not. Paimon feels like this is more likely a deliberate setup. It's incredible no matter how you think of it. Using a letter to draw us here, and these challenges involving various mechanisms... <sighs> The so-called Dodo King is no amateur. Aww. There goes the holiday mood. Hmm. Well, either way, I will do my best to remain vigilant. Wow. Master Jean's so cool when she's determined. Thank you for your understanding. Not sure that was the appropriate response. I found him! It's Dodo King! Kaya is in Jean's office. If you pay him a visit, I'm so doing that. Everyone, we can take a closer look, but please be on guard. This cutscene was a whole lot of telling you what we already saw. Flea has bloodlust in her eyes. Okay, let's go, uh, let's go back to Mondstadt real quick.
I'll turn the in-game music on because the cutscenes have music anyway, so I killed the playlist. Alright. See, the knight's building is like this, yeah. <laughs> we teleported on top of it. Who would have thought that the acting Grand Master would ever step out of her office? Oh my, looks like I'll be quite busy in the near future. But there's no helping that. Did he update this from time to time? Because that'd be amazing. No, damn. But we'll check back from time to time. I, I, that would be so good if they gave you like a, a whole shtick over here. God damn it. Imagine talking to a guy and he's immediately being told goodbye. Oof. Are they making another God of War? Okay, where's the boat? What? Where, where's the boat? Okay, well, I guess we'll just go to this thing and summon it there. So, if the islands have a bunch of chests and it's like a whole thing, why is this time limited? Why didn't they just make this like... Seriously, why is this not like Dragon Spine? Because Dragon Spine had a limited time event connected to it, but Dragon Spine itself is permanent. Why, why not just make this place permanent? This sucks because I love exploring in Genshin and all that, that's great. And free loot's great, but I'm kind of busy right now, right? It's like, it's not, it's not the best time for this. Cause lore. Let's light it, up. Judgment. it is weird if there's like actual exploring to be done here. I mean, this does look like it's a lot simpler than an actual new zone, right? It's all reused assets uh, and stuff like that. And I'm guessing it doesn't have as many puzzles and stuff that you like you had in, in like the actual new areas and stuff. But it's still probably you know some fun stuff here and there. And uh, what? This is clearly an archery thing. Leave it to me. Hmm. I guess shoot it through that. The game. Shut up. I'm trying to figure stuff out on my own. Also, I like how they didn't uh, change the text there. So I think I need to shoot that through the the ring. This, these angles. God damn it, these bastards, how dare they? Okay. Huh. I wonder. Damn it. God damn it, what is wrong? What is wrong with this fucking island? Trying to do shit over here. Hey, go go, Baron Buddy. Bet you can't keep up with me. Huh. Am I supposed to do some kind of elemental 
reaction or something? Try wind. There's still a long road. It's way more fun to figure this stuff out on your own. I don't even know why I have to explain that. Wait, why is there a chest over here? What the hell is going on on this island? Like, what? What is? What is this? Why is this releasing when Nin why did this have to come out when Ninja Gaiden came out and fucking Lost Belt 6 started? Although I guess that was kind of a, a nothing burger, let's be real. But uh, you know what I mean here. Well, it definitely has something to do with these three objects. I figured that part out. That didn't work the way I wanted it to. Man, I want the amber thing where you get uh, two bunnies. The Summer Avalon event. The main thing is it was just nine chapters. I mean, brah. Huh. Damn it! Why does the cooldown have to be so long? Yeah, the shoot the foot thing is stupid. Because it, it's not only you have to shoot the foot, but you have to do a charge shot. It should just be shoot the bunny and it blows up. That'd be way better. I don't get it. It's literally saying that's the objective. I feel like this is not designed in a way that is intuitive at all, and that's why they had the information dump on the screen. Because there's really nothing intuitive about this. God damn it. Summon the ball. Oh, yeah, it's wind blade indeed. Maybe I need water. Do I even have water? Wise. I'll take care of it. I'm missing. I don't get it. Hmm. I think it's something I haven't tried here. Go, go, Baron Bunny. Like, there's clearly something to do with, you know, like hitting this or... or something, right? Like, I mean, clearly, it's got a, a target on it. I can't really line this shot up though. Like, there's kind of no way to do that. Alright, I'm gonna look into this later because this is just gonna be boring. Uh, I, I wanna get to the, uh, the thing over there. 
My team is now in chaos. Maybe I have to shoot it with a boat. I trust you. Ready for reconnaissance. Let me see if uh Rosaria is spawned in now. Yeah, she is. She must have gotten it when we did those dailies. I think I need like one more for the achievement. About to drown here. Crush. Boy, does she not look good at making a Wow, yeah, that ice lasted a long time. Boy, Kaya is like the only uh, confident one when it comes to making ice bridges. What the hell is that over there? Remember when wind actually got to interact with ice and it, it was like fun and then they were just like fun's not allowed and then you can't do that anymore? I should do this uh, hilly troll thing while I'm here. That I really did. That is one of the for only updates they've done that I really dislike because it's a terrible mindset, right? It, it, yes, it was an unintended thing, I'm sure, but it's like the players having fun. Oh, no, 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 no. Shut it down, right? Like. It wasn't broken, it wasn't overpowered, it was just something fun and silly you could do to kind of break the game, but in, in a pretty harmless way. So who cares, right? Like, yeah, it made traversing water a lot easier, but that's not really a bad thing. It's like, you want water to be annoying? Why do you think everybody hates water stages? I wonder if they were just afraid of it, like breaking puzzles in the future that they didn't want uh, to be broken. More speed. That did not really work out as intended. To the core. That's that that that's that's a good time. Like, why power up your explosion when you can just knock them off? Well, that was anticlimactic. As was that. Yule was pretty fun. I was actually surprised how much I liked her gameplay. This was really different. You got uh, like some decisions to make between like how you stack and all that. So it's just kind of fun. Not my favorite in the game. That would be Bido, but uh, still fun. I will use Noelle in future, and actually, I used her this stream, Zaw, for a boss, but uh, I, I will use her plenty in future once I actually have gear for her. That, that's like kind of the problem, and I've just been too lazy to farm gear, so I've been busy with a lot of other stuff, but I, it, I'll, I'll get around to it at some point for sure. Who is this? Just uh, grab this real quick. Not really sure what I'm looking at there. I should be looking out for those seashells. Why is this time limited? If this area was just like another spine, was ice spine, what was, I don't remember what it was, I already forgot the name of it. Anyway, uh, if it was like that, I'd be so down, but man, I'm so busy right now. Like, I'm, I don't really have time for all the bullshit exploring right now, even though I like doing that stuff. like an army general and don't you want to talk to me if not it's okay if i give you this flower right you play other games question mark yeah yeah and making it time limited i'm like why though what in god's name Is that a really tall person? 
Yeah, that's, yeah, a great observation, Paimon. That was the weird thing. That, yes. So tall. Wow, yeah, not, not the giant fucking mask. But they're they're so tall. I, I'm gonna be right back. I, I I need to I need to go relax after that revelation. And by that I mean I need to get water. All right. What's going on with the uh, this guy? I wonder if he's the boss. He resembles a human, but something's not quite right. Nobuke, I see you. You can uh, ar ar arbo arbitrate. Right, you can arbitrate Queen. Uh, what is this kid saying? She obviously doesn't understand what that word means. Hey, Donoki! Why are you ignoring me? Hey, this could be Bob. Is it because I took so long and made you angry? Then I'm sorry. Huh? And now she's apologizing. Oh, didn't see that coming. Hello, Donoki! It looks like they're not interested in Klee at all. Some kind of humanoid machine. No response. It must be damaged. Is this gonna be the run guard for the new zone? Oh, do you recognize it? No, I can only guess. It looks completely out of place on this island. Look at its clothes. Huh, it appears like it came from Inazuma. Yep. Inazuma? But isn't that really far away? It would appear so. This area of the sea is independent and does not border any country, so it certainly seems out of place here. Fido should have been in this event! But given Inazuma's current situation, how could something like this occur? So imagine one of your favorite characters is the only character in the entire game that has never shown up in the main story or in getting or getting a character side quest or any of that uh, imagine that great feeling abandoned machine weird did someone bring it here oh yeah there's certainly there's two that's right there's two King is tired. Right, right. The Dodo King is probably asleep. He was waiting so patiently for you, and then. However, Bido has been in the game longer, though, so there is that. Let's go with Klee to play elsewhere and come back once Dodo King wakes up. Will we? Of course. No, I get it now. Yep, she's got it all figured out, guys. This isn't Dodo King. The real Dodo King is somewhere else. Accurate. Huh. Is that right? I won't give up. Dodo King, just wait. We'll find you. And there she goes. Again. Please, wait for us. Trying to cheat the uh, camera here.
I feel like they're intentionally not letting you do that. Interesting. Will this be a boss or will it be a mini boss like a rune guard, I wonder? Yeah, I mean, if this was playable, I'd be way more down for that than any of the other weeb shit they've shown off that's going to be playable later. I'm not interested in any of that. Let him nap in peace. I'm hearing that. Look here. Like, remember Big Boy? In, uh, in Gouda? You know, Gouda Gouda, the big samurai dude that was drawn by the Goblin Slayer guy? You know, I can get behind that, alright? If, if that's playable, I'm hype. But th they, they don't ever make weeb shit like that. I still have hope someday they'll make him playable. He's awesome, dude! Like, like... He was like, you know, samurai armor and shit. None of that, none of that weeb version. I, it's like, god damn it. Yeah, like, sir alone? That's like the weeb shit I can get behind, right? Could the memorial be for the machine? Perhaps it once performed some deed that merited a memorial. Dude, I haven't fought Sir alone in years. Like, so many years. Everything we've seen here indicates that there was once a human presence in these waters. Still, there isn't enough for us to infer what kind of civilization it was. Dude, I gotta say, the deal, some of the DLC bosses in Dark Souls 2 really are something. And like... Everybody talks about Sir Alone and, and, you know, all that, and he's super hype. And I, I like him, too. But I liked the other bo big boss there, Fume Knight, right? Oh, my God. And he, just his contrast with Sir Alone, right? Sir Alone was all, you know, weave honor duel and stuff. And then Fume Knight is just, like, you know, juggernaut knight, right? It's fucking awesome. And up to now, we still have yet to see any people... Fume Knight is probably my favorite boss in Dark Souls 2. Like a, a really good fight. Master G, can I go over there and have a look? Yes, but be careful. Maybe when, if time allows, when we get kind of closer to Elden Ring, we'll start playing Dark Souls 2 as a bonus game, right? When we have uh, free time. Okay. Clea's too young to have a proper sense of danger. Traveler, the rest of us must stay alert to the situation. Honestly speaking. I thought that letter was only a prank at first. That's what we thought! I suspected as much too, but who would send a prank letter to a child? I can think of a few people. Like Beryl! I bet you Beryl would do that! A letter that guides what a shit! Mechanisms on a deserted archipelago. It's bizarre. It makes me wonder whether this isn't some kind of trap long in the making. We must keep our guard up. Miss Barbara? What's wrong? <laughs> yeah, the color swap smelled the demon. Why would the Dodo King not want to see you, Klee? Dodoko loves me, and and I love Dodoko, so Dodo King can never separate us. That's why Dodo King doesn't want to see us. That's a face right there. <laughs> Klee doesn't want him to separate us. <laughs> hey, Klee. Do you know what this is? <gasps> it's a heart pastum! I heard my big si- uh, Master G say that Klee always wanted to play heart pastum, right? Yeah, Klee was just thinking about Lady heart pastum. I wouldn't say Fashion Souls and Dark Souls 3 was awful, but it was definitely not the best in the series. I'll say that. I mean, there, there were some cool get-ups and some are okay stuff, but uh, I do think Dark Souls 1 and Dark Souls 2 have better fashion than 3. Uh, Dark Souls 2 definitely won on the Fashion Souls department. I say this a lot, but I'll go over it real quick. You know, Dark Souls 2 gets a bad rep, and in many areas, rightfully so, but I think it did do a lot of things right. You know, it made backstepping good, it made leaps attacks good. I think the individual level design was very visually great. The world design, though, was trash with the way the levels interact with each other. 
And adaptab adaptability was the worst thing ever, right? Let's tie your amount of iframes to a stat, right? That's so counter to the design of every every Souls game ever. That was that's like the biggest sin for me. Is just adaptability is a fucking crime. And then uh, there's just a lot of really sloppy enemy hitboxes and stuff, like really sloppy. There's literally attacks that come out in one frame. Where like the, the, their damage will come out in one frame before they even have an animation to fo like follow like why you're being damaged. Like a lot of that stuff in Dark Souls 2 is legitimately bad and it deserves criticism. But there is a lot of cool shit too. I made this heart pastum especially for you. Now. <laughs> Whoops. Yay! Dark Souls 2 had good PvP until everyone leveled up adaptability and everyone was level 500 and then the PvP was terrible because soul memory is really Take out adaptability, take out soul memory, fix up some of the hitboxes. Good game. So keep your chin up, please. After we meet Dodo King, we can all help you convince him to let you and Dodo Co stay together. Okay. Like, I think Dark Souls 2 has insane potential. I hope someday they revisit it. And just because if you were smart about some changes, you could make that game pretty incredible. I mean, there's it has a lot of cool stuff, and some of the scenery is awesome. A lot of lot of boss fights and stuff. Uh, so it's got and loads of you know really cool, unique armor sets and everything. So there's a lot of good things there. Yeah, leave it to us, Glee. This dodo jerk can't hide forever. Even if it takes a thousand years and a thousand searches. I swear, if that ball thing is another content thing in this event, I'm gonna lose my mind. But until then, let's have a good look around the area. Too much content! Now what? Oh my god, it's a thing. What is going on? Why is this event, like, just content-packed, and, and, and it's time-limited, and then F goes over there like, yeah, nine chapters, uh, no, no quality of life updates, uh, tits, there you go. W like, why? I don't, I don't, what is, j fuck. What is this? Why is there more stuff? Fuck! Why, why is this time limited? If this wasn't time limited, like, oh yeah, I'll just get into this later. But like, no, you gotta make it all time. Look at all these rewards everywhere, like all this loot and shit. God damn it. And there's more to come. Oh great, there's more to come. That, that's what I needed. So I guess the, the first- oh, I see. So like, the, leg one is the hilly troll destruction. Leg two is whatever the boat bullshit they just said is, and there's gonna be something else for all these other ones. Oh boy. Why can't F go have content, man? Like, <laughs> what the fuck? And there's treasure chests everywhere, and seashells or some shit. I I need I need SQ in this game because uh, I decided to go for Constellation Six Bido, and that took a lot more time than I would have liked. Or a lot more SQ than I would have liked. Yeah, I know there are devs that actually try, and it's because the game was successful, so they decided to hire more people and, you know, really put, you know, uh, effort into it. I'm really excited for the new zone, because they probably, they, a lot of their time and developers that they hired, and uh, or I think we grounded ourselves. Um, I, I think a lot of the effort and time, you know, that they've been putting into the game is actually going into the new zone. So that's going to be the real, you know, test for what they're doing. Uh, I think I, oh, I got another Eula, and that was it. And I didn't roll enough to hit, like, another safety net. Uh... But I I'm gonna try to not spend a single SQ in this game for quite a while. Because I, I used a good chunk, so... I need to build up my, uh... Safety net again. 
But I felt like it was okay because we knew what the next two rate ups were, and they're not Gene, and there's no way literally the next rate up would be Gene, I don't think, so. And then we're gonna get a bunch of weeb shit for a while, so I think I have a long time to save up. The thing about Dragon Spine is it wasn't time limited, only the event aspect of it was. You know, the, the area and the treasure chest you could find it whenever you wanted. Probably not worth killing these with the boat. Noobs! I don't really mind getting another Eula though, because Eula's gameplay really has been fun, and uh, my gear on her kind of sucks, but at some point I'm gonna gear her, and I'm interested to see how she does, like in the Abyss and everything. I figure I might as well finish off these uh, Lily Troll event thingy. Looks pretty linear, so I can just get that out of the way. I have not been lucky with the 50-50, like, ever. Pretty much every time I hit the 50-50, uh, I get Mona. And yeah, thank god Pity carries over between banners. Imagine having Pity. Fko, please! I like how, you know, people over there saying Fko would lose money if they did Pity. Meanwhile, Genshin is just destroying them. And basically, every 5-star I have in Genshin is from the Pity system. Because their pity system is quite forgiving. What they do is basically you're the odds of pulling a five star at random in Genshin are not particularly good, but it's not hard to hit the safety net. And then there's also like a, a there's like two safety nets actually. There's basically like every time you roll and you don't get something, you get I think slightly more likely to get a five star. Uh, and then whenever it goes off though, I mean it it, it, it takes your safety net. And, but then there's the hard safety net of if you don't get anything in X number of pulls, you will get them. Uh, those two systems combined, I think, are really good. Uh, it's just, yeah, your odds of pulling a 5-star totally randomly are kind of bad. Most 5-stars do come from the safety net. Um, but I don't, I don't really mind that because, really, you can hit safety nets from a reasonable amount of time of saving up as a free-to-play, right? And then if you fail to get it and you maybe didn't have as much saved up as you wanted or you'd already rolled on something prior, you know, you know exactly how much money it takes to get... You know, you know exactly how much money it would take to get... Uh, whatever rated up five star there is, right? And so you can make a, a decision like, is this worth the money or not, right? And that's so much better than gambling. And they're making loads of money, dude. They're making insane money. People keep saying they're not making insane money because they keep saying, hey, look, they're, they're not number one on the mobile charts. And then they forget that the majority of people that spend money on this game spend it on PC. Like, the, overwhelmingly more people play on PC than mobile. It's not even close. The fact that they're even on the mobile charts is, ins is, is insane. Generally, pity systems do increase revenue because it gets a lot of people to spend money that would- I would spend money on FGO if they had a pity system. Although, they'd have to actually add enough units that I like, which they have a tendency of not doing. But, um, you know, if- let's say- let's say- let's say they added, um, uh, 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 uh Aggravane and Percival and I rolled on that and then- and then they added Vortigern and I rolled on that, so now I'm out of SQ. And then, like, next major event, they added Butch Cassidy, right? I I'd probably go for the safety net then. I guess it depends on how much it would cost to, to hit a safety net. But, you know, I'd probably have a bit of SQ left over, right? And, and whatever you get in the event, so I wouldn't have to buy the whole entire safety net. Because generally, buying the entire safety net is not a reasonable amount of money, generally. But uh, you normally can get a chunk of it done for free, so... Or in some cases, all of it done for free, so... I barely put any money into Genshin, but I do put some into it. That's the thing. You know, I, I don't use it for rolling the Gasha. I, I, uh, the money I give to Genshin is sometimes I buy the Battle Pass. Not always, but sometimes I buy it. And then I, I buy the monthly thing. The $5 a month. And so I don't put much money into, into Genshin at all. But I put some into it. Where I put basically absolutely nothing into Epco. I, I buy the, Garen, the, the GSSR, which is in through a year is so much less money. And I only do the GSSR because of chat. If I, if I wasn't a streamer, I wouldn't do it. I would do it occasionally, because sometimes there's a GSSR that's good value. But so many of the GSSRs, I have like a 70% chance of not getting anything I want, or more, and so I wouldn't do it, right? Like, I'd say like the last like three or four GSSRs I would not have done if I wasn't a streamer. And so yeah, I give FGO like no money. Even though I like FGO more than Genshin, but I give it like no money. Where Genshin, because they have better monetization, I, I give them some money. I don't give them a lot, but I give them some. 
uh, where it's better, and it's better to get a little bit of money from everybody, and then a lot of money from some people, than only getting a lot of money from some people. It, it's not even close. Yeah, fuck. Only gambling addicts are like, yeah, the excitement of the gush, and, and, uh, I, and I don't want a safety net. Literally only gambling addicts see it that way. Like, it's, it's terrible. It's not even healthy. Like, fuck that. I keep getting confused with this event UI. Okay, I'm almost done here. I, I, I think I need to do two more and then we're done. And I don't have to do any more of these. I wouldn't say Evgo is only good because it's fate related, because I, I do think they do some, not always, but often, they have very good boss design, especially for challenge quests. I mean, I really appreciate their challenge quest design, and it's very enjoyable. And I, I mean, really, that's absolutely worthy of, of praise. Um, but a lot of what's good about Evgo is definitely the voice acting, which is not DW related, the story, which is not DW related, uh, the music, which is not DW related, right? Uh, you know, the art design, you know, a lot of that stuff, you know, which isn't exactly FGO specific, is why it's good. But, you know, the, the, the boss design, I, you know, Zeus was so well designed, right? That was fantastic. Yeah, like what Zaw said, I think when FGO peaks, it's amazing. Like, Lost Belt 5-2 was such a great experience. That was an because the story was great, the setting was great, the music was great, the boss fights were great, the pacing was great. Right? I had... Lost Belt 5-2 is such a... Uh, nothing in Genshin has been as fun as that for me. Like, no way. Um, so yeah, when they ace it, they really ace it, but they don't ace it very often, I have to say. I really do hope, though, they, you know, step their game up. I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm ready for them to turn that ship around. I can't, I can't even imagine spending a lot on FGO, right? I don't... It takes zero willpower from me to not spend on FGO. Because it's... It's shit. It's like you spend... I'm in not a good spot right now. But you, you know... You spend money on, on a question mark, right? I just... You really... I have no motivation to spend money on FGO, really. Right? Because of the lack of a safety net and that kind of thing. You know, outside of GSSR, I'm just like... No thanks. Yeah, Bido swimming passive, actually kind of nice. Hit the gas! Going a little wide there. So I get, yeah, those guys wouldn't spawn until I blew up the, the tower there. It's kind of weird. Not nearly as good, but this does have Wind Waker vibes. So my god, Wind Waker did such a good job of having all these crazy little puzzles and neat doodads and enemies to fight and stuff. On all the, on all the stuff on the ocean and the islands and watchtowers and everything. Wind Waker's a good game, man. That's, uh, that's some good shit. Okay, I think we got one more of these to do and then we done. Okay, this isn't one of those, but I see a treasure chest over there. I know, I really like Genshin's monthly thing. I think FGO should copy it a million percent. Because basically, you know, you it doesn't stack, right? So you, there's... Basically, you get way more for $5 than you would normally get for $5. But you can only get it, you know, once a month, right? Because uh, if you could always buy SQ at that rate, you know, then people would be able to hit safety net, like, you know, it's nothing. But you get a crazy amount of SQ over the month for $5. Uh... And it's just a guarantee thing, right? And it's just... That's a really good system, right? It's like, yeah, five bucks, get a, a huge amount of SQ over a month. You know, it, it's no big deal. And especially because of the safety net. Especially because of the safety net being in the game. Uh, yeah, if FGO would do that, I, I, I would do it. I would buy it. You know, I, I've been wanting to... I want to support FGO, right? I want them to make money and do well and add new content and all that stuff. I want I want to support the game, but I don't want to fucking gamble, right? That's That's the thing. So if they would add some stuff like that Genshin has, you know, I would actually support them. And happily, I would happily support them. I, uh, don't really know what just happened there. That was some interesting physics. Were we supposed to, like, light the torch or something? Oh, there's another enemy. Wait, what? How are they below me? Excuse me? 
Huh. How, how did these guys, uh... How did these figure it out? All the other hilly trolls can't survive in this kind of environment. I don't even. I guess I'll grab that loot. Okay. Seems to be less in these chests than the normal ones, but still good. And also free SQ. Imagine having all this free SQ out and about, but it's time limited. <laughs> That's kind of annoying. What is that? That must be the other side event that's going on, the new one I unlocked. Alright, let's do this hilly troll thing, I think then we're done with that. Yeah, you can do that. You can you can buy the monthly thing in advance, but the SQ is, you know, you're not going to get the SQ right away, so it doesn't really matter. You might as well wait the month. I don't know if they actually... Here's the thing. I don't know if DW and Anaplex, more importantly, has the brains to really examine what the other games are doing outside of just looking at the monthly monetary charts. Right? I don't think they even think about the fact that Genshin's got a bunch of revenue that isn't actually being tracked by the monthly charts. And I, I don't think they're, they're paying attention to what the other games are even doing mechanically. Like, if you ask someone at Anaplex if they even know what the monetization model of Genshin is, they probably don't know. Now, I don't know that, I'm just guessing, but from the way they behave and, like, how ridiculous their other... Because Anaplex runs multiple games, right? They're, like, clueless, man. Like, they're, they're like a dinosaur when it comes to how they run their stuff. I think I may have just parked my, my boat in a whirlpool. How to, how to uh, trap yourself out here. Okay, I don't think it's taking damage. Because every good idea Fko ever has comes from Type Moon. And they've literally confirmed that in interviews. You know, all the good stuff that they do, all, like lowering the SQ amounts and, and AP regenerating faster and, and, and daily login rewards and stuff like that, that all came from Type Moon. And, and, and like the, the free five star, that was Type Moon. Uh, and for the sounds of it, Anaplex fights them every step of the way. Like, you know, Type Moon, I think, does have an idea of what's good. And, they, and from what I've seen from interviews and stuff, Type Moon really isn't interested in penny pinching with FGO. They don't seem to give a fuck. And why would they? They're a tiny ass company and they're making an ungodly amount of money. I don't think they give a fuck, right? It's like, it doesn't, they made so much money off FGO and the pay franchise in general. They, uh, they have no reason to penny pinch and Nasu legitimately, when you, when you hear him talk about this stuff, he seems to care about good game design, good boss fights, not screwing people over with money and stuff. So I think, I think if it was up to Nasu, I, I think, the game would be a lot better when it comes to this kind of stuff. Um, he didn't even want it to be a mobage in the first place. He was actually against it. But yeah, I think Anaplex in, in is definitely Nas uh, not Nasu and uh, DW is the main problem. Because if you look at uh, Anaplex's other stuff, I mean, it's ran like trash. I mean, it's all ran like dinosaurs, and you have no idea what they're doing. Yeah, they, they said Nasu specifically is the reason they started making harder boss fights and like in Camelot and on. That was completely his idea and they were actually against it as well. And some people still are, by the way. Some people really don't like that Fko has boss fights that you could actually lose. But uh, I think overall it's definitely a net positive for the game and I, I wouldn't be playing it if they hadn't done that. The whole reason I decided to finally play Fko, because I've been aware of it for a while, but it was just Mobage trash, was because of Camelot and it had real boss fights. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll play that. And, and it was great. Like, my god, I remember when I finally got to Camelot and fought Gwen and got to you know, put my thinking cap on and, and I had a blast, dude. So I was looking forward to it as I was playing through the easier stories. And while I was playing those, I was kind of just learning the game and, and figuring out, you know, because I knew the game was going to get harder. So I was trying to understand things as, as I went. Even though the content was really easy, I was trying to figure out, you know, how all, all the systems worked. And, uh, and I was also just enjoying seeing, the, you know, the characters and everything. Uh, and then when I got there, it was like, oh, it's not all for naught. This is actually awesome. Yeah, good old command spells. Well, I was hoping one of them would swing right away, but that didn't happen. I'd be scared of Bido, too. Damn it. All right, 
I think that's all of these. So I guess that's like the event currency for the shop. What is this? Can You can repair your boat, I guess? I guess it's a trinket or whatever, so it goes in that slot. Alright, where's the shop? Yep, okay, well what do I need the most? I need a lot of resistance books, I think Gene uses resistance as well, and I think so does D. Luke. so that's a... Insta-buy right there. What is this? Oh, is this the free uh, prototype weapon thing where you can pick one? I think I'll take Claymore if so. That's cool. Yeah, people were saying that was coming up. These are for your teapot. That's kind of cool. I think I need gold as well for Bido. Well, I'm gonna try to buy all of this stuff, but in case you can't, you know, pecking order. I don't really care about these. These don't look too interesting, but I'll grab them. I think Prosperity and Diligence are normally weave characters, so... Oh, actually, I still have... Oh, can I just buy everything? Oh, yeah, I can just buy everything, okay. Oh, I, I guess it's- is it a different currency for a thing? I don't even know. How do you get these? Limited time? This must be from the new thing, the boat thing. So yeah, each thing is gonna have its own shop, I guess. And this is some fat loot, though. Holy crap. Like, seriously, th this is some fat loot they're giving out. Well, I guess I won't complain. Pretty cool we get a prototype weapon. That's actually really nice of them because people have complained that those are supposed to be the free-to-play weapons, but the drop rates are so shit that a lot of people don't have them outside of the other freebie ones you get from like the main story and stuff. So, uh, that's yeah, that's, that's excellent. I'm glad they did that. I, might, I already got a maxed out uh, one, like the, 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 main, the main Claymore one that everyone crafts because it's good. Like the one that makes the giant shockwave. I already have that one of those maxed. So I might use that on like the ice sword uh, that I use on her. It's either that or another one of the typical claymore one. Wait, did I pick the wrong one? Did I pick the regular sword? Oh, well, that's not so bad either. If, if I wasn't gonna pick a clay, they look the same. Anyway, uh, it's fine uh, because um, the net my next pick would have been the straight sword anyway. I don't really have a straight sword user that I use much right now. But I will someday, so... That is kind of a waste, though. Oof. Yeah, there's Kaya, that's true. And, uh, right now he's borrowing Jean's sword. But once I get Jean, I'll give it to her, so I'll need something else for Kaya. So, if anything, that's actually kind of a good thing, because I don't really have any need of another Claymore. Uh... Where I, I really do have need of a- What is going on? Why is this time limited? Can I come back and do this later? Like, I wanna get- I wanna play Dark- What is the- I wanna play Darkest Dungeon and- and, uh... Uh... uh Ninja Gaiden and shit, right? Why does this have to be time limited? New crafted weapons coming next patch too? Interesting. They're killing me right now. Why do they have to add so much more content than FGO? Also, oh, what's with the bubble? I mean, look at all this. There's shit everywhere. Look, what the fuck? There's literally shit everywhere. Wait, is there anniversary coming up? That's probably not for a little while. I wonder what they'll do for that, though. That'll be a big versus. Okay, I really need to figure out what is the deal with these? Because the second you get off the thing, it stops. There must be like an item in my inventory or something. That's like the only thing I can think of. Like maybe, is it this? I bet you it's, the, it's something to do with that. Either that or this is gonna be in the boat segment. Uh, oh, 
okay, it's a whole shtick. Interesting. Well, this could be fun. See, I don't need y'all's fucking help. So these are like all over the place, so this is gonna be like a real reoccurring thing. I wonder if, um... I guess, uh, I wonder if that's what the, that, I never even looked at that tutorial. I wonder if that tutorial is basically telling you you don't have what you need to do this right now. I wonder if there's another... Uh, platform I can stand on if I'm supposed to just shoot a bunch of these. Fire everything. I feel like you're supposed to shoot this one somewhere else before like the other one comes back. Oh, I see. When it goes through the gate, it becomes a certain element. I think that's what it is. That's what it looks like. Okay, so I think you shoot this one, then maybe shoot this one. I missed. Because you need to hit them both. I will say I uh, I really could use Am Amber to change my angle. Actually, I bet you chat did spoil it. The I just didn't see it. I, I was ignoring chat quite a bit earlier. I wonder why. Because th these are all over the goddamn map, so it's gonna... I'm clicking the wrong buttons. Oh, I see. You don't even have to go into the aim mode if you don't want to. Alright, let me look around here. Taking me a second to figure out the mechanics of, like, the different rings. I was ready to bonk. That, that, that destroys that wind thing and it starts shooting the other ones. But then it only hits the one. I could just fire multiple. Oh, okay, now if I shoot this one, then like nothing happens. So I've got to shoot this one. I have to shoot this one again. Then it doesn't work. Hey, thank you, Mr. Zatz, for the uh, one-year sub. Uh, just casual there. Just r real quick. I am confused here. If I shoot that one first, then basically the exact same thing happens, I think. Maybe I shoot this one first, then the back one? I don't know what- I don't see what that would even do, but, uh... Huh. I mean, it's surely going to involve... ...shooting this thing at least twice, right? Bonk, bonk, bonk! Like, you clearly need to shoot both of them. And I'm guessing that right there is what... ...matters, I'm thinking. Like, why does it- why do the other balls start shooting? I'm so confused right now! Right, it stops instantly if there's no one on the switch. Wait a minute. Fuck. Damn it. Baron Bunny, you traitor! Best character in the game right there, though. Oh my god. Oh. 
That, that's the thing. Some of these are rotatable. That's, uh, pretty relevant. Although I don't, uh, for this particularly, I don't, I don't think that's really helping, but, uh... Most of these don't seem to do anything, so I don't, I don't, I don't really get why they're there. Need more pep in your step with these throws. Huh. Well, uh, someone's gonna have a a bonk in a, in a different country there. Bet you can't keep up with me. <sighs> Told you I'd win. I don't see how this helps me though. So that seems to be the only one you can rotate. Let me make sure. Yeah, that does seem to be the only one you can rotate. Unless there's one I am missing. That looked like it was very close to working, but uh, just barely didn't. Fuck, that seems like it's so close to working. Motherfucker! It's like right there! Random hilly trolls gonna get bonked by that, feels bad. Huh. Why did that not work? No, don't do- 10 out of 10 content, oh shut up. Like, what, do I look like Cairo to you? Go, go, buddy. Fucking zoomers, man. Yeah, it just stops if something gets off the button. Can you cheese this? I do not think you can cheese this. That would be hilarious if you just walk up and blast it. What's the point? I don't really get the point of, of that one. Does it need to be a fireball? To... It needs to be a fireball to uh, get the back one, and that that you have to go through that hoop to be a fire one. Okay, well, really not that complicated. You really just have to turn. All you really got to do is turn the thing, and then shoot the back one. That, that's literally all you have to do. There's just all this unnecessary shit here to confuse you. They're they're messing with you, is what it is. Nonsense trying to try to mess with those boomers man They <laughs> grow up so fast Look at all this loot though Look at his aim That was weird I tried to use my skill right away and it didn't quite work out Fuck! I, sh I, I, the I didn't hit him because he was in the air. Trying to be cool there. There's so much loot here. What is going on? The dodge guard? Oh my god, are we playing... Like some 
ball shit? What, what, what are we doing here? Where do I have to stand? Right here. Oh, I got that. Get on my level. Fucking noob ass wall doesn't even know how to send a ball back. Get out of here. Fucking being, imagine being that wall and sitting there for like a hundred years just to get beaten that easy. What a scrub. What's the, is that a, is that a, the, 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 shut the fuck up Paimon. Is that a goddamn water boss minion? That looks like a goddamn water boss minion. Oh, we kill that without prejudice or with prejudice, what, whatever, in English language. Fucking murder this man. God, get that out of here. Look, there's more of them. Please don't make these standard mobs, especially the hawks. You know, the, the other ones are okay, but the hawks can go fuck themselves. A rock made a sound when you said Why is there so much content in this goddamn patch? Oh my god, do you have to... Do you have to hit them in a certain order to make like a song? I don't want to do this. I'm not a musician and I don't want to be a musician. No, I don't want. Nope, I'm doing this later. Nope, not doing that. That's nope. Uh uh. Why is this a limited time event? They clearly put effort into this. W w w like, there's all these stupid puzzles, and they're like, yeah, but you only get a few weeks to do them. Fucking bastards, man. This really should just be permanent. Like, I really think there's no reason this should be permanent because it's 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 not like shitty quality, so. I uh, kind of failed the dodge there. Why did I hold that down? I only had one stack. What was the? You motherfucker! What are you? What are you? Way back there, and you thought you could get away with that? Thought I wouldn't notice that? Oh, you're trying to snipe me over here, little shit! Yeah, fuck you. It doesn't do any damage. I'm disappointed. Okay. It, it's getting late. I, uh, I should probably wrap up. But there's a lot to do here. So what is... Oh my god. What is this? What is this? Let me guess. It, you can only you can get it now, but it'll be available. It's like for crafting and like level up mats or whatever the fuck But you'll be able to get it in the Japanese zone. I bet I think they're really making it obvious the Japanese zones about to drop So you can get like ahead of the curve from this event with that kind of stuff Why is this out here? Did I, did I kill something that I didn't realize? I feel like I killed something that I didn't realize Reverse F go indeed. Yeah, they're like we're, we're adding units, but you don't you can't get the materials for them Like seriously, what is that shit when I really look at it in context? What the fuck is that you add units that you can't max because there's no way to get the materials in the game yet Like what the fuck is that? It's ridiculous. Oh, a good aim there. Oh God, I'm hitting the wrong button. Okay. I hit, I hit the wrong button. I forgot it's the, it's the normal attack button once this starts. This 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 this, this, this wall is a little stronger than the other wall. I got it now though. I just I just need to remember what the button was. Wall one streamer zero. No, it's it's streamer two. Thank you. It's wall one streamer two. So let's be fair now. Fake for mercy. Freeze to the core. Rack and ruin. Get comboed. That was so much more damage though than I needed. Okay, this event's pretty cool. Like all these little puzzles and shit. Like it's not bad. It's just I wish it wasn't time limited.
Watch this amazing move we got right here. When I could have just shot him with the bow to, to, to do the fire damage, right? Like, it's, it's not great. Okay, we'll, we'll wrap up there and we'll come back and explain. Wow, there's a lot to do out here. There's a lot. Uh, let's see. We'll go, uh, heal. Um, I just, I didn't look. I assume Eula is limited, but I, I, uh, I didn't actually pay attention, to be honest. She'll be back, though. They seem to do reruns pretty quickly, actually. Man, I would actually like to see Benny interact with D. Luke. I don't, I don't think they've ever met in the story like, like officially, but I think that would actually be pretty fun. All right, boys. Thank you for hanging out. We'll be. Uh, I think tomorrow we'll do uh, Elf Go, and then maybe uh, Ninja Gaiden or no Darkest Dungeon. We'll do Darkest Dungeon tomorrow. Uh, and then we'll do maybe Ninja Gaiden, and then we'll do Genshin again. I'll, I'll play some Genshin off stream though, just because there I'll, I'll fall too far behind otherwise because there's so much to do here But thank you everybody. Uh, I appreciate you guys and I am out of here. Wait, we we should raid somebody I don't know what I'm doing uh, What do we got to pick from here? Hmm Probably sh sh hit someone playing F go. Here we go. Somebody's fighting Limbo. Oh, not Zorgan is fighting Limbo and God Juno right now, which is a, a a fun one. So it looks like he's using Mothman. So hopefully that's going well for him. All right, boys, go get him. <laughs>